The movie's beginning is about the city of Mexico, Guadalajara in 1985, where the government had to lower its military troops to fight drugs. It was recorded that more than 500,000 people were killed in that event. And this is the main character in this movie, who was arrested by the Mexican secret police. This is Mexican narcotics, his name is Kiki Camarina. And this is Narcos Mexico. The story begins with Sinaloa City, the birthplace of Mexican marijuana smuggling, fertile land with hills and mountains ideal for planting drugs. This older man is one of the leaders of the drug cartel in Mexico named Ernesto, and this young man is Rafa, an ex's student who is now growing drug plants in his greenhouse. Suddenly, Mexican army troops ambushed this location and burned all his fields. Because of the operation carried out by the government, many smugglers were arrested. Rafa, who was being chased by the Mexican military, hid in a church with dozens of other Sinaloa residents. The military, those who surrounded the church, forced Rafa to surrender. If not, the soldiers would massacre them all. Suddenly, a policeman named Miguel came there to enter the church. He reasoned that he would arrest Rafa so that no civilians would become victims. After being forced, Rafa showed the location of the fields, the ones that hadn't been burned. Miguel asked the commander's permission to take him to the headquarters. This city was destroyed, and smoke was seen rising from the burned drug field. Miguel then came to his house and saw the furniture was in a mess, as well as the greenhouse where Rafa planted his drugs. In the secret hole, he hides his wife, Maria, and their children. It is revealed that Rafa is Miguel's younger brother, so the arrest was just a pretense so he could save his younger brother. Rafa looked happy because some of the drugs were still safely hidden there. Miguel then met the governor of Sinaloa, who was not in line with the central government regarding the operation to eradicate drug cartels in his area. The governor has a debt of service because Miguel brought up his son Rodolfo. Therefore, he offered the position of head of the state police to him. But Miguel refused, and the governor had no interest in running for president. The scene then moves to Fresno City in California, United States. It looks like Kiki is doing an illegal drug business with two drug dealers. When offered a pound, Kiki wants 100 kilos, but they don't want to give it because they don't believe in Kiki. It turns out Kiki is an agent in the DEA of America who is undercover. So they think he is not an officer, Kiki turns on his TV loudly. So they believe there are no eavesdroppers, then gives his gun to them to shoot himself. Because of that, they finally thought of Kiki, but problems arose because the Fresno police ambushed them. This operation failed because the Fresno police did not know about the mission of the DEA. Kiki, who was annoyed, punched those police. After his superior called him, Kiki planned to change his assignment to Miami, but his superior preferred to move Kershaw to be moved there. Kiki then told his wife, Isabella, that he intended to move to the Guadalajara, Mexico, because his career will end if he survives in this city. In a location where the top leaders of the Sinaloa cartel hold a meeting, their top leaders are Pedro Aviles and one of his men, Don Nato, with his bushy mustache. Because of the operations carried out by the government, the cartels are starting to lose their income. Miguel, who is only a member, advises Pedro to move to a safer place to avoid the officer and rebuild their illegal drug business, Guadalajara. Although the Naranjo brothers still controlled the area, Miguel said it was fine. Don Nito underestimates Miguel's suggestion because Naranjo is not an ordinary cartel. Because Pedro is nicknamed the Lion of Sinaloa, they should be willing to accept his business offer. Finally, Pedro agreed on the advice from Miguel, but he had to go alone to submit his proposal. Miguel agrees, but he wanted Don Nato to go with him. Isabella, who was pregnant, finally accepted her husband's decision to move to Guadalajara, Mexico. Miguel, accompanied by his younger brother Rafa and Don Nato, left for Guadalajara. Again and again, he underestimated the plan of Miguel. Arriving in the city, Rafa went down first to one of the campuses majoring in geology, while Miguel and Don Nito booked a hotel room. In a short story, one of the Naranjo brothers, the ruler of the city's cartels, came to meet them. Miguel then explained his proposal for a joint drug business to be built in this city, and the profit will be divided by 50-50. According to the estimate by Don Nito, Naranjo refuses this offer and expels Miguel from his city. Unexpectedly, Miguel shot to kill Naranjo. Don Nato, who doesn't want to be caught by corrupt police and killed by the brother of Naranjo, chooses to go. Rafa shows a map and a location that the geologist lecturer said is very suitable for gardening. Meanwhile, Kiki, who had just arrived at the American consulate of Guadalajara, asked to meet his boss, Jane Kaikendal.
Jane thinks Kiki is very suitable for assignments in Mexico because his skin color is the same as Mexicans, and it can be profitable for their disguises. It turned out to be because Kiki's grandmother was from this city. Jane explained that their job is only to collect data and information that was sent to agents in the north. When Miguel and Rafa were still at the hotel, waiting for the bodies, the team from DFS came to catch them. Not only them, but Don Nato was also caught while trying to escape. On the way, Miguel claimed to be a former state policeman. He talked about his acquaintance who had a brother who was police nicknamed El Azul. They were surprised because what Miguel meant was their commander, and because of that, Miguel wanted to meet him. When entering a bar filled with Mexican officers, Kiki became acquainted with Mexican police named Sammy Alvarez. There is the police of Guadalajara, and then the Jalisco police, then Federal. The one who is sitting with Jane is Commander Rogas, and next to him, holding a glass, is Commander Mendez. Miguel then meets the Commander DFS, nicknamed El Azul. He shows a package of marijuana, which he considers to be classier than his drug. Rafa explained that his product was male, it was not full of stems and seeds, so it was effortless to suck. Miguel offered a business partnership to El Azul with big profits. But soon, Naranjo, who was very angry, came to avenge his brother's death. Suddenly, El Azul shoots Naranjo because he agrees with Miguel's business offer. Don Nato, who previously admitted that was not with Miguel, finally supported him. Because he doesn't want to die ridiculously at the hands of this DFS commander. When they came to the bar, Jane explained about the DFS commander, who was called a monster like the KGB and the Gestapo, namely the German Nazi secret police, known to be brutal and evil. DEA couldn't touch them because Sia protected them. When he entered the toilet, Kiki said there was blood on El Azul's shoes. Miguel, Rafa, and Don Nito arrive at the location, which is the mountains of Guadalajara. Even though it is a desert, there is enough water to plant marijuana that can smoke by America for a year. And this is where Miguel wants to build his business. And then, the scene shows the DEA and the police ambush a warehouse that holds 125 kilos of illegal drugs without significant resistance from the guards. Jane said this was a monthly donation that made the image of the local police go up, and everyone was happy. The people on duty start understanding the cartel's game with dirty government officials. There, it is seen El Azul is watching from afar this operation. At that location, they find the corpse of Naranjo, who controls Guadalajara. Kiki asks, if this has anything to do with the struggle for territory? Jane says yes, but because of the power hierarchy here, it is not clear. They will kill each other to fight for power. Rafa is on duty to plant the new marijuana and fails when the harvest is close because the field needs more water. His subordinate feels annoyed and throws a grenade into their field. Miguel, who just told, told him to look for a way to solve that problem. Because of his ambition to build a colossal drug business in Mexico doesn't want to fail. Don Nato introduces his nephew, Amado, who works as a pilot. Kiki, taking his wife, he is seeing Azul in a warehouse. He stops to remember the location. Rafa came to campus with angry to meet the geologist who was teaching. The camera focuses on a beautiful female student named Sofia. Rafa is mad because the location he suggested was wrong. At night, Kiki returns to the warehouse location to spy on him. The scene then moves to the Ojinaga Chihuahua. Miguel is meeting with one of the cartels in Mexico named Pablo Acosta. He invites all the cartels in Mexico to sit at one table, making an organization mutually beneficial. Pablo agreed with Miguel's suggestion, but he thinks Miguel's boss, Pedro, who he thought was challenging to do business with. Pablo said they have been hostile for years because of trivial things. Miguel convinced him this invitation came from him wanting to move forward together. Pablo finally agreed and promised to go to the Guadalajara for this meeting. Kiki was still monitoring the warehouse, which he suspected was the location for drugs. Amato advised Felix to use an airplane to distribute his drugs. Felix's goal was to form a Mexican smuggler union similar to what Pablo Escobar did in Colombia. Even though this is not easy, Felix has the skills to convince them. And one thing, the most important thing, is that unscrupulous law enforcement officers support this idea. Azul ensures that his superiors will come to this meeting. He is a high-ranking DFS commander named Salvador Osuna Nava. The purpose of DFS of Mexico is to eye American investment. So if the CIA needs help in Mexico, then the DFS is the one who steps forward. From tapping phones, watching Soviet and Cuba diplomats, and ensuring the ruling party's opposition remains under control in its history.
DFS has not hesitated to kill hundreds of civilians and students who staged demonstrations against the government. Back to Rafa, who received advice from the geology lecturer to continue looking for the source of the water. There was no choice. Rafa returned to assigning all his men to dig. Kiki showed a few photos that he got from the warehouse. He is sure inside it is hidden a lot of illegal drugs. Because they couldn't act by themselves, MFJP, or a particular unit of the Mexican police must be involved in this raid on the pretext that they would get a quick share. Shortly, the team ambushed this location, armed with information from Kiki, but they got pranked because the only thing in the truck was a pipe. As a result, Kiki and DEA were humiliated by the Mexican police. Because the drilling machine was broken, Rafa, who didn't give up, used a hoe to dig his well. Don Nito accompanied Miguel, and this time flew to Tijuana to meet the Pacho brothers in his business plan. He said it didn't matter as long as Falcon allowed him. And then Miguel went to meet this Tijuana ruler nicknamed El Cubano. Miguel planned to send his drugs through Tijuana and bring the cartels together at one table. Even though Falcon called this a step that was not easy, he praised his ambition. He expressed his support for Felix. Isabella, who brokered this meeting and had a long crush on Felix, she tried to seduce him. But Felix remained loyal to his wife. Even though he was considered a failure, Kiki did not give up, and this time, followed where the truck at the warehouse went. Back to Rafa, who was already frustrated, he threw some grenades into his well until looked splashing water. They are all cheers for the success of Rafa. After following for a long time for that truck, Kiki's car almost ran out of gas. But if he goes to the gas station first, he will lose track of the truck. Before the meeting, Miguel convinces his boss to make peace with Pablo so their dream to build a substantial illegal drug business in Mexico can become true. But Pedro said Miguel's idea was stupid. In this meeting, Miguel mentioned one by one the top officials of the Mexican cartel, starting from Pablo Acosta from Ojinaga, the Arellano brothers from Tijuana, and several other cartels. And most importantly, the top officials of the DFS guaranteed the security of their business. They all toast this meeting. Pablo expressed his feelings. Thank you. This collaboration can be realized because of his services Miguel Felix. Pedro was excited to stand up because his name was considered to be mentioned, but Miguel tried to calm down that this was all due to the services of his boss. Pedro was hurt by making trouble by removing Pablo from this agreement, and as a result, those present chose to leave. This place. After a long time following, Kiki has to bite his fingers because the gas in his car ran out. Miguel felt that he had failed and his life would end at the hands of his boss. When Pedro took him, suddenly, a police patrol car stopped them. They were all told to get out of the car. Not long after, Don Nito came with the director general of the DFS. It turned out that they immediately shot Pedro dead and his bodyguards left Miguel. This is where Miguel ended Pedro's life, which was an obstacle to his goals. Pedro's driver name, Capo forgiven because he chose to work with Miguel. While walking, Kiki sees several passing trucks and buses carrying several people with their heads covered with cloth. He was surprised and asked, where would they be taken? And then, the scene shows that after he succeeds in planting the illegal drugs, Rafa becomes a rich man and buys a luxury house. His friends also created jokes by riding motorbikes in it. Not only Rafa who become rich, of course, the richest were Miguel Felix and Don Nato. Felix succeeds in creating the first illegal drugs union in Mexico. The DEA team still works correctly and asks for a flight to surveillance in Mexico. After months of waiting, the result of the aerial shots showed no marijuana fields. Kiki felt they had toyed with these empty fields. This young man is Rodolfo, the son of the governor of Sinaloa named Celis, who was also raised by Miguel when he was his bodyguard when he was the police. Celis introduces Felix to the three other governors. At the hotel owned by Miguel, Rodolfo will hold his wedding. The bigger the tree, the stronger the wind blows. That is what Felix is facing because the DFS officials ask for an additional monthly deposit after seeing the success of his business. Because his request is ignored, DFS kills one of the cartel leaders named Bido from the group Arellano Brothers. Miguel had to find a solution to solve this problem. When meeting, Nava gave a special DFS badge to Miguel. He reminded Miguel to be aware of the position he was given. The additional money he asked for was called for an important person. He would also give the task of moving something from point A to point B. Rafa is attracted to a beautiful clubbing woman who turns out to be Sophia. Because she sees his old school style, Sophia thinks of Rafa as a waiter and orders him to clean the table. 
Miguel then confides to Celis about an important figure above Nava who wants his share of bribes, but Nava hides his identity. After hearing the number, Celis was sure if Nava needed much money to bribe many people. <laughs> he continued his investigation to the location when he ran out of gas to wait for the truck and bus to pass. Jean met another pilot named Alfredo, who claimed to have photographed a barren desert in the photo he showed. He was shocked because the photo was taken more than one year ago. After waiting a long time, finally, Kiki sees a car convoy. Eventually, he followed the cars until the resting location. Kiki changes his appearance to look for information. He entered the bar and pretended to drink while smoking. He also offered to the man next to him. Kiki admitted that he was from Michoacan and was looking for a job. He first told his pregnant wife that he would not come home tonight because he was on duty. After long waiting, several buses were escorted by armed cartel groups to arrive and order these workers to get on the bus and take off their head coverings. One of the bodyguards had prevented Kiki from entering because they did not recognize him. Luckily, the guy who was given the cigarette by Kiki before helped him. After arriving at the location, this DEA agent was shocked because these people work at the vast expanse of marijuana fields as far as the eye can see who doesn't know where it ends. The two other DEA agents keep an eye on a criminal named Cochiloco, Aka the Mad Pig. At the same time, Gene calls his boss, Ed Heath, to report on the Mexican aerial shot, which he thinks is just bullshit because it was done a year ago. Ed explained that the Mexican government and the American Ministry of Foreign Affairs are looking the other way and thinking the cooperation between the two countries is going well. Because America is considered a guest, they don't want if the guest starts to disturbing. Back to Kiki, who can't believe what he is doing in the fields this marijuana. While on his lunch break, he was surprised when he saw Azul, because the DFS commander recognized him. Kiki tried to hide his face. Finally, the workers returned to the fields again to continue their work. Miguel was contacted by the Arellano brothers, who wanted to avenge them. He allows it and asks to come to his hotel. Miguel then gives a task to Amado to prepare several of his people. When the work finishes, Azul sees Kiki among the workers. Before his disguise was uncovered, Kiki rushed to the bus and covered his head. On the night of the wedding reception celebration at Miguel's hotel, the DEA's agents saw Chasaloco entering there, and then they disguised themselves to enter the hotel. It was seen Sofia and her parents attending this party. She smiled when she saw Rafa coming there, looking cool like Elvis Presley. Back to Kiki, who had returned from the marijuana field, when he contacted his office, he got information that his wife was already in the hospital to give birth. When the Arellano brothers came to the hotel annoyed, Miguel immediately met him with Nava. In another place, it was seen that the group of assassins assigned by Nava to do the job were trapped by Miguel's men under the leadership of Amado. Their leader was beaten and then put in the trunk. Miguel did this to solve their problems and threats to Nava, who continued to blackmail him. Miguel conveyed his greeting and prayer for the bride and groom. When Celis turned, he praised Miguel, who was considered his son's godfather, since Miguel became his bodyguard. Celis felt proud of Miguel Felix's achievements until now. The two DEA agents, who were undercover, photographed the guests. On one side, Rafa managed to get the heart of Sofia. Miguel was shocked because Celis also asked him for a bribe worth $200,000. Even though he already considered this governor as his father, the assassin assigned by Nava was finally buried alive by the Arellano brothers as a form of revenge. Kiki could breathe freely because his wife gave birth smoothly. When he returned to headquarters, he showed cannabis that he picked himself from his fields, as well as two other agents who showed photos of state officials to Mexican law enforcement officials, who were involved in a conspiracy with the illegal drugs cartel from the governor, senator, the chief of DFS, and a group of Sinaloa bandits led by Miguel Felix. And then, the scene shows when Sofia was celebrating a party at home with her future husband, chosen by her parents. Suddenly, a group of masked bandits sneaked into her house. They were all shocked and scared because this gang of bandits brandished their weapons. That's when they kidnapped Sophia. After being brought into the perpetrator's car, Sophia was excited because the perpetrator was Rafa, her lover. Back to the DEA, who had difficulty investigating and getting closer to Felix because he got protection from DFS. Don't just give up. The team tries to find the weakness of his younger brother and his subordinate. Because of the solid and reasonable network he created by Felix, the DEA for Ambassador America's approval, arrest Felix, but they needed support from Mexico City. Azul told Felix that they were hunting for Rafa. 
it was revealed that Sofia's father is the Minister of Education and the senior member of the most potent political party in Mexico named PRI, who has been a leading for 50 years. Because of that, Felix realized that if their demands were not met, his business would be leveled. Like it or not, he had to hand over Rafa, or the company he had started would be destroyed. But his wife disagreed if they had to lose Rafa. The DEA team used this opportunity to catch Rafa so that they would get Felix. Felix then came to Rafa's house and scolded him severely for kidnapping Sofia and causing big trouble. He had to return Sofia to her parents. After that, he was about to give himself up. But Felix is not heartless told Rafa to pack up and hide. Police were deployed throughout the whole city to hunt Rafa. The DEA then cooperated with the police commander to catch Rafa based on the information that they got. Nava comes to meet Felix to discuss this. Felix claimed he could not find his younger brother. Nava said that his boss, the Minister of Defense, he promised to help him, but there was one condition he had to do. The combined team then looked for Rafa's whereabouts in his house. Because of not finding him, the commander ordered his men to make a mess as a message. Every place known to belong to Rafa has been searched, but the result still needs to be found. Felix and Amato flew to a location on Nava's orders that he wanted the search for Rafa to stop. It turned out that Don Nito took Rafa to a hidden area on Felix's orders. He warned Rafa not to call Sofia for his safety. Felix found out what items to bring with his plane. Hundreds of military weapons bound for Nicaragua escorted by a military commander. Kiki then invited the police commander to meet his informant at a bar. Because the smooth way did not make him speak, this commander was forced to use violence to open his mouth. On the way, Kiki knows if Sofia has been returned to her parents. He knows if Rafa and Sofia are just a couple in love and arrange this kidnapping. Kiki then has an idea to hack Sofia's phone with the help of his friend so that they can find Rafa's whereabouts. After a long flight, finally, Felix and Amato landed the plane in Nicaragua. Suddenly, the military commander who was on the plane had disappeared. When the army troops arrived, Felix showed his badge as a DFS agent, but the two of them were still arrested. Because of the effects of the drugs, Don Nito and Rafa acted crazy. When Don Nito went to buy beer, Rafa, who had already missed his girlfriend, was desperate to call Sofia. Through his friend Antonio's help, Kiki, and the police commander investigated the telephone calls that came into Sofia's house. Meanwhile, patrol police find Don Nito drunk when driving his car. The police punched him. But when he saw his identity, he was shocked because Don Nito was a DFS agent. With the help of his friend named Antonia, Kiki, and the police commander investigate the telephone calls to come into Sofia's house and be able to find her whereabouts. Meanwhile, Felix was held captive by the Nicaragua military and then tortured. Felix had tried to admit he came here on Nava's orders, but he was still beaten. That night, the combined team of DEA and the Mexican police had surrounded a house that was used as Rafa's hideout. After paralyzing several guards, the team then went inside. It turned out to be a military commander who only warned Felix. When the group was about to catch Rafa, suddenly, the commander ordered his superiors to back off. Kiki, who was curious, saw Rafa, who was in the corner of his eye. But he had no choice. These police then took Don Nato to his house and told him to return tomorrow and be his driver. Felix sees so many piles of drugs ready to distribute at this location. The commander says there are obstacles to their distribution to Honduras, Panama, and El Salvador, because the President of America stops the Bahama. Rafa thanks Felix for saving him, and the scene moves to Mika when she is carrying her two children, and she is scared when police, which we know was a member of the DFS, tells her to get out of the car and leave her children. Felix and Isabella met a mafia named Mata, the owner of a pile of drugs that Felix saw in Nicaragua. They met because Felix offered himself to help market it. Even though Felix is proficient in distributing marijuana, can he also sell cocaine? Mata explains the character of two Colombian business people. He judges that one is a reliable businessman and the other is known to be very emotional. Mata finally agreed to bring Felix with them. Meanwhile, the DEA team considered that what they did to Kiki's wife was a form of warning, which meant that they would always be followed. Because state officials constantly thwarted their steps, Jane planned to give the amount of smuggling which is doing by Felix to DEA's headquarters in Washington, D.C. Kiki wants to buy Antonio's car that will be tapped for his operations. Antonio gives it for free because it supports the procedure he is carrying out. Felix tells his wife that he will go to Colombia. With everything he already has, Maria wonders why Felix has to touch cocaine. Felix only answers, if not by himself, 
then it will be taken over by someone else. After months of monitoring Felix, the DEA team had yet to find where the Mexican drug lord's biggest money was kept. Roger had given a summary of his discovery of a savings and loans bank in El Paso. Some of the files were brought home by Kiki to continue to learn. The next day, Kiki hears again the wiretapping recording of the cartel gang, who has to buy a new truck with a check that Felix can only make. Kiki intends to infiltrate Felix's office so they can find the primary account number. Shortly, Felix and Isabella meet at the top of Cartel Cali to offer to work together to distribute their narcotics to America. They remind Felix about the difference in the value of marijuana and cocaine. Apart from that, so far, they have received help from Falcon. With her beauty, Isabella also convinced them that Falcon could not meet their desired target. If Falcon only used a straw, Felix would use a pipe. And the three of them finally agreed to Felix's offer. When the Loco and Capo gave up on delivering the marijuana to Benjamin's place, Suddenly, the military ambushed them. It turns out to be they are led by Falcon, who is furious after he knows Felix has been disturbing his business. After succeeding in robbing the marijuana, the troops assigned launch rockets and destroyed this place. Rafa was furious with Falcon, as well as Felix, after he found out that his older brother had started touching cocaine, which he hated so much. When he was about to return to Mexico, suddenly Felix and Isabella were kidnapped by the Medellin cartel gang to tricking the DFS, who was always watching in DEA, a soldier who looks like Kiki was tasked with tricking them out of the headquarter. Even though Kiki was hiding in Susie's car to carry out his plan, Kiki entered Felix's hotel, which was used as his office too. When he entered the lift, the DFS members almost recognized him. But luckily, Kiki disguised himself as Emilio, who worked at the Department of Agriculture. Felix and Isabella were brought to the headquarter of Medellin Cartel. Meanwhile, Kiki lied that a cleaning lady had clogged the toilet, even though he stole the key to Felix's office. Meanwhile, Felix met the Colombian drug lord. He is Pablo Escobar. Felix looked nervous because he already knew the greatness of the name Pablo Escobar. Moreover, he is known as a temperament person. Felix claimed to have made a deal with the Cali cartel to transport their illegal drugs through Mexico. Even though Felix terrified, Felix is sure that if Pablo wants to kill Pablo's men, he will finish him when he is in the car. When Pablo asks about the purpose of doing this business, Felix answers that he wants to conquer the world. Suddenly, Pablo asked if he wished to put his cargo under load with the Cali cartel, but if something happened on the street, he wanted their share, which was reported. Felix agreed to Pablo's terms, and they agreed. When Kiki checked Felix's desk, Kiki found Felix's primary account number, which was used to store all of his wealth. At the same time, the DFS agent entered Felix's room because he saw the door was open. Kiki was ready with his gun, but luckily, the security forces left again. Isabella was so happy that the two of them escaped death and even got two of Colombia's biggest cartel customers at once. After tracing the account, the team of DEA got information on the transfer value of up to $30 million every week. After being told the results of the meeting with Cali and Pablo Escobar, Rafa still didn't agree with Felix running the illegal drugs business, which he considered very dangerous. After reporting his findings to the central headquarters, Jane was contacted by his superiors from DC. Even though his results were good, he reasoned that all this was connected to politics and money. Wall Street had all this time deposited much money into Pemex before the oil bankruptcy. Concluded, the director of DEA should have given the green light to Jamie to continue this case. Nava got a report from the Attorney General's Office of Mexico about the activities of DEA agents in America in Guadalajara. When he saw it, he was shocked and immediately took action. Antonio, who was in a cafe, was suddenly shot dead by DFS members, as well as Roger and his family, who got terror from DFS agents. Kiki and his boss come to the crime scene. Kiki feels guilty because Antonio's identity was leaked and caused him killed. They think that their hard work during this time meant nothing. Criminals are getting stronger and honest officers are getting removed. At that time, they planned to arrest Felix in America. And then Kiki was seen with an American police named Jim, overseeing the arrival of a plane at the American El Paso, Texas airport, United States. When this cartel gang moves millions of dollars below the aircraft, the team immediately scooped them up. When the plane was about to fly again, Jim immediately chased and crashed his car. Six million dollars from the plane was successfully taken. Felix came to the golf course to meet a Mexican government official named Zuno Ars. His purpose is to ask for support for his plan to put illegal drugs from Colombia and send them to America. 
But this official wanted to focus on something other than the main point of the conversation instead of talking about the delicious food in Sinaloa. Felix complained to Zuno's nephew that he had paid millions of dollars for the meeting, but didn't get any results. He told the big class official's style of play, must be careful because they don't want to be highlighted. Even though he reasons that the time is urgent because the illegal drug shipment will arrive soon, Felix still has to wait. Felix's wife, who is buying a luxury bracelet, is shocked when she finds out from the shopkeeper that her husband bought the same bracelet last month. As a wife, Maria must have been jealous and suspected that her husband had been cheating on her, so she discovered the recipient's identity of the bracelet, which was worth $120 million. Nava and Azul began to dislike Felix, who planned to insert the illegal drugs without discussing it first with them. Don Nato tells Felix about the problem with the marijuana that Falcon seized, he would handle it, so he doesn't need to worry about it. Felix's confidant at El Paso named Thomas is related to sending millions of dollars being intercepted by Kiki. Thomas is threatened with arrest by the El Paso police because DEA already holds evidence of his involvement with the cartel, which makes him afraid that the cartel knows Thomas has handed over the informant to the DEA. Thomas had no choice but to follow their desire to summon Felix to come to El Paso today. He will excuse the importance of Felix's signature because otherwise, the $47 million in his account will disappear. Meanwhile, Don Nato assigns his men to bribe the police commander with one suitcase full of money to send all of the subordinates. Shortly, they ambushed a location used to hide Felix's marijuana which Falcon confiscated. Falcon Group, who was guarding the warehouse, were killed. And then that warehouse burned. Felix was very restless because at this time, Zuno didn't contact him yet. After knowing what happened, Falcon planned a counterattack on Felix. Besides that, Jane reported to Mexican police officials about the plane carrying $6 million in cash. Here are some of the documents in El Paso. He did this so that the corrupt official reported it to Felix. Thomas finally contacted Felix to come to El Paso immediately because he needed his signature before the entire contents of his account disappeared. DEA took them because they had found the deposit history, account number, and bank address. While supervising the house that the jewelry shop gave, Maria saw a pregnant woman coming out of there. Felix was increasingly convinced that the problem was indeed big because the police he had bribed told him about the confiscation of millions of dollars and documents on the plane. Back to Maria, she met the pregnant woman who was selling paintings and was seen wearing the same bracelet. But here, Maria didn't immediately clear it but only bought her painting. When Don Nato and his accomplice were having a party in the warehouse, suddenly, military troops invaded this location. A shootout ensued because the military was no match for them. Don Nato and his accomplices immediately ran away. Thomas was finally contacted if Felix would fly to El Paso. The team of DEA finally succeeded in luring this illegal Mexican drug king to enter the territory of America. While Felix assigned Isabella to make a deal with Falcon to resolve their dispute, in return, Isabella would get 20% of Tijuana. The combined team of DEA, El Paso police, and Marshall planned to arrest and kill Felix after entering America at the border gate. After making the trip by his private, Felix used the car to go to El Paso. Arriving at the Mexican border immigration gate America, the team was already waiting there, seeing Felix inside his car. But the Mexican immigration officer there immediately called someone after seeing his passport. The one who called him was Zuno, who immediately stated that they agreed. Because of the strength of this official, he knew that American officials were already waiting for Felix when he crossed the border. So Felix had to turn right immediately if he didn't want to be caught. Kiki is upset because again and again, his plan has failed miserably. Isabella meets Falcon to make a deal. On behalf of Felix, he promises $10 million. Because Falcon feels that Felix is not just anyone anymore, finally he agrees. But suddenly, Mexican officials come to kill Falcon. Felix is shocked to see the painting when he returns to his house. Shortly, a Colombian plane landed in Mexico, carrying marijuana sent by Pablo Escobar. And the scene shows the two Cardinals members are seen leaving a location of boxing match. They saw a drunk man urinating in his car. Because he didn't accept, the man was beaten up, so they fought. The young man's friend then pointed his gun. But what happened? He shot his friend to death on the spot. When Don Nito come to the morgue, it turns out that the young man is his son. Back to the DEA team, who received a report from the Department of Foreign Affairs of United stated that illegal drug smuggling had increased by 60% in the last two months. 
Kiki is very ambitious to catch Felix, the ruler of Mexico's illicit drug. His business smuggling cocaine, called the white gold, because the price is 15 times more expensive than marijuana. But Rafa himself is still holding on to the marijuana business. He gets angry when one of his cars is not delivered, because Benjamin prefers cocaine. Amid his growing business, the director of DFS wants his share because he knows Felix is sending a new product. But Felix doesn't want to respond because has already paid for many people in the Mexican government. Isabella, who is already waiting in Felix's office, and tells him if she has not got Tijuana share as they agreed before. Felix just asked her to be patient as he is managing everything. Isabella, who is disappointed, chooses to leave. When entering the elevator, she met Falcon's right-hand man, Tony, who works for Felix. Felix then meets Don Nato to give him support because of the death of his son. On the other side, Felix confides in Don Nato because he wants more cocaine to be sent, so he needs a group of cardinals under him to make the right move. What is now worrying is Rafa, who has gone out of the way to organize. Rafa unconsciously drops his gun in one of the bars, and suddenly he sees Sofia there. Rafa is shocked because it turns out that Amato is approaching Sofia. He doesn't accept his ex-lover being approached by Amato. He snatches his crew's gun, then shoots it several times into the air, and has time to point it at Amato. Because of his actions last night, Felix immediately scolded his younger brother for causing trouble at the clubbing venue, which was filled with children from families of respected people. But Rafa turned angry because the illegal drug of his creations was without acorn. He feels left out in this business because Felix prefers cocaine. If Felix wants Rafa to be by his side again, remove Amato first. When Kiki and his son are eating at a restaurant, two Americans are seen behind him. Suddenly, Kiki sees Felix across the street get into his car. But Felix didn't respond when this DEA agent called him. When he came home, Felix saw Maria packing her things to return to Sinaloa because he knew Isabella had come to the hotel. Felix reasoned Isabella was like his own niece, and she was part of this business. But Felix couldn't explain about the pregnant woman who work at the art gallery. Jame and Kiki meet Alfredo, who has worked at the Ministry of Agriculture for four years in the illegal drug eradication program. It was unclear what they were planning, but Kiki had a plan. Meanwhile, Felix calls all his accomplices to gather at the hotel. It turns out that that morning, Kiki flew with Alfredo to take pictures of canvas fields belonging to Felix. Don Nato scoops up his son's killer named Omar. He looks guilty and cries in fear, especially when Don Nato shows his gun, which seems to tell him to suicide. Suddenly, Don Nato said he forgave him as his late son's wish. When he gets back to his car, it turns out that Don Nato ordered his subordinate to kill Omar. In a meeting with all members of the organization, Felix chooses Hector Palma to take care of operations in Mazatlan and then Juarez became Amado's territory, while the Arellano brothers still held Tijuana. Isabella, who heard that, face changed in annoyance because Felix did not discuss her part. Suddenly, Rafa left this room because he was disappointed his older brother was more concerned with Amado than himself, as well as with Pablo Acosta expressed his disappointment because he felt that this federation had been destroyed. This was where Felix started to act decisively because he thought his agreement with Colombia resulted from his hard work. Anyone who disagrees, please leave. Because no one dared to fight him, they all toasted for him. Kiki, accompanied by Jamie, is showing an aerial photo to their superiors and the American ambassador. It was seen clearly that the 400-hectare marijuana field outside Guadalajara was the exact distance in the state of Zacatecas. Instead of being happy with this finding, Ed kicked Kiki out of the room because he thought they should close their eyes. After Jane convinced his boss, they were promised to destroy the farm in two weeks. Conversely, Kiki has volunteered to move to San Diego this week. He hopes he can see this achievement before moving to service. Disappointed not to get her ration, Isabella threatened Felix to reveal his murder of Falcon. But Felix threatened her back. Micah is also disappointed when Kiki asks for a few weeks before they move to San Diego because he has to complete his mission first. Back to Felix, who previously promised to move to Sinaloa, if he wanted his mistake is forgiven. Felix realizes it and has changed into a real cardinal. He confirms to Maria that he will be in Guadalajara. Even he said he did not need Maria anymore. When Rafa Loco and one of his subordinates are diners at the restaurant, Two American tourists come who love to paint, but Rafa and his accomplices accuse them of being in DEA. As a result, they are both viciously killed in this place. And now, Nava is disappointed in that meeting because he got no rations from Felix. This king, 
a Mexican illegal drug who is fed up, finally kills Nava using a trash bin. Azul, who saw this incident, could only watch. The DEA team and the Mexican military were deployed to the location of the cannabis field. Felix was only suddenly notified before the attack. Rafa, who was there, invites his subordinates to fight back. The war between the military and the illegal drug cartel gang ensued. There were a lot of victims from both sides. Rafa, angry with this attack, shot soldiers who attacked his fields. But because the military force was much more significant, he was overwhelmed, then fled into the field area, where a soldier almost caught him. Rafa managed to survive because of the help of his subordinate. Jane was shocked when he saw the vast expanse of these cannabis fields as far as the eye could see. Soon, the American ambassador came to see this cannabis field in the desert. The military then mobilized to burn down the entire area, estimated to be worth $2.5 billion. The most extensive operation in the history of DEA, which was published in Time magazine, made Felix's power vulnerable. Azul, who was promoted to be director of DFS, and says they couldn't do anything because the operation that mastermind by America directly with the military. In a meeting with his accomplished, Felix claimed a big loss but this gave him the momentum to focus on distributing cocaine, which was five times the profit. Felt it was worthless, Rafa left. Felix already knows about the murder of two American tourists that his younger brother did. He didn't want Rafa to act rashly again, which could endanger the whole organization, because Rafa must be brilliant. Upside down with the DEA team who are having a party for the success of their operation. The good news is, they are starting to be loved by the center of headquarters in Washington, D.C. The next day, two investigators from the Foreign Affairs Committee of America will ask for their help to open all the files about the Mexico cartel. Felix then discusses attacking his farm with Zuno's nephew, who worries that the government's involvement will be scrutinized. Therefore, Felix wants to meet Zuno privately to discuss it personally. Amato convinces Acosta to follow advice from Felix to make Guaras as Felix's most extensive distribution was to distribute cocaine after his cannabis field was attacked. At night, the two of them raid two of the subordinates to remove their marijuana were downstairs in the watermelon truck. They reasoned the truck fell into the sewer, and the watermelon was scattered. To confirm their confessions, Acosta had to look for his goods. Meanwhile, Rafa's condition worsened due to farming problems, and his love story with Sofia ended in the middle of the road. He became a heavy addict, which damaged his brain and mind. Meanwhile, the DEA team disclosed all the information they got about the track record of the Mexico cartel to the two American investigators who came. After waiting long enough, Felix finally met Zuno, which is actually he is the Minister of Defense of Mexico. He hopes to get support again because his future business plans will generate millions of dollars beyond the marijuana fields that are burned. With the departure of the DEA agents from Mexico, the situation will subside, which is an excellent opportunity for them to continue the business. But Zuno seemed reluctant because he didn't want to touch the Americans. That night, Amato accompanied Acosta, and two of his men checked his overturned truck. At first, Amato was afraid that this was a trap, but it turned out that the truck was indeed overturned, and their belongings were still in it. Azul invited Don Nito's right hand named, Sammy, to do something. After that, they went to Rafa to invite him too. Jane and Kiki were disappointed again because the two investigators admitted that they were only gathering information because another authority was in the hands of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Kiki, who was about to leave, was suddenly kidnapped by this cartel group. Disagree with Rafa and Azul's actions? Don Nito told Felix about Rafa's actions. When Felix arrived, Rafa was immediately scolded because he was considered to have acted stupid. It turned out that it was all done by Zuno who changed his decision after he found out that the DEA agent had a meeting with two investigators from the American Congress. Kiki was kidnapped to be forced to open his mouth about what the Americans had planned in Mexico. Felix then saw Kiki. And then is seen Micah woke up from her sleep at night, and because Kiki still hadn't come home, she immediately contacted Jane. Don Nito expresses his emotions to Rafa for making the stupid decision to approve the kidnapping of that DEA agent. After the Americans learned about this incident, Felix was worried that Zuno and his accomplices would make Rafa a scapegoat. Before that happened, Rafa had to disappear. Kiki was severely tortured to dig up information about the wiretapping operation of the DEA on Mexican government officials. 
After checking that his car didn't lock, Gene reported this to his boss, Ed. Because one of his subordinates, Butch, has been transferred to another area, Gene struggles alone to find Kiki's whereabouts. Gene asks his boss to consider the possibility that Kiki has been kidnapped. Because Kiki often talks about his job all this time, Micah suspects that Felix kidnaps her husband to get information from him. Gene then asks for help from the Mexican Federal Police, but he doesn't get a good response. After that, he went to the state police repeatedly, Jane being mocked because we had to bring the warrants from the prosecutors. Several attorneys contacted by DEA mostly refused, and after getting the contracts, the bureaucracy hampered the process of this case. When Jane didn't feel some friends and colleagues helped him suddenly, 20 DEA agents in various regions were sent to help him. Jane was happy with their arrival, including Roger and Butch. Their mission is to find Kiki, assisted by sending the most sophisticated bugging device at that time. Not only Kiki, it turned out that a cartel Mexico gang also took Pedro hostage. Eid and the Attorney General of Mexico appointed a Mexican security directorate member named Armando Pavan to lead this investigation. When Sofia is on a trip with her mother, Rafa suddenly appears to intercept them. He wants to take Sofia on vacation with him, and Sofia agrees, even though Rafa is a fugitive. And this is Commander Pavan, who leads his subordinate to begin the search. At the same time, the DEA team hears their subordinate's conversation if Rafa on the way to the airport. This combined team is immediately going to catch him. After arriving at the airport, the team can raid, but Commander Pavan wants to talk face to face with Rafa. Even though this time he refused a bribe of $1 million by Rafa, Pavan could not arrest him because of the order from his boss. Pavan reasoned that he was not Rafa, but DFA agent named Marcos. This made Jane and other DEA agents furious. Hearing this information, Micah went to Ed, who she judged was appointing someone wrong. Happened to be the American ambassador and executor at DEA named Jack was there. Due to pressure from the government and the American media, in the end, Pavan was fired and replaced by a new commander named Calderoni, who had helped DEA and was known to be honest. Because of this problem's complexity, Azul advised Felix to leave Guadalajara immediately. It was true. The combined team immediately searched this hotel. The Minister of Defense Zuno, who Felix contacted, admitted that he could not help him because of the unexpected reaction of the Americans. But Zuno could not free Kiki either because the problem would escalate. When Kiki was beaten and interrogated, every single answer from his mouth was recorded. Felix tells Don Nato that he has an idea to end this problem. Shortly, Jane got information on the location of Rafa's hideout in a beachside villa in Costa Rica. With the help of the Costa Rican military, the combined team immediately went to arrest him. One by one, Rafa's subordinates guarding this place were immediately killed. Rafa couldn't do anything. Meanwhile, Kiki is given an injection of adrenaline, which can make him have a heart attack. Calderoni hit Rafa so that he would provide the information about the location of Kiki being held. After succeeding in getting it, Jane and the team moved to that location. When they searched for him, Kiki was not there. And the story moves a few days later. The combined team gets information from police intelligence that Kiki is being held captive at this location. The raid took place dramatically because there was resistance from the cartel group. A shootout ensued here, but Jame and Calderoni focused on looking for Jame on the rooftop. Jane was surprised to find many people who had died. In the attic, Jane didn't see anyone. Shortly, he got information that a body had been found, which was Kiki. Micah, who Jane visited, immediately went to the hospital to see his body. The military doctor of America gives the report from the resulting autopsy that's Kiki's body. In conclusion, Kiki was not killed on the farm. This was all a fabrication by the Mexican side to cover up their crimes. The DFS and the police, which the cartel bribed. America would not remain silent and immediately carry out operations. Apart from the police officers who were arrested, the DFS member named Morlet was also a target. He was shot dead on the way to his house. But still, the most important person above him could not be touched. Because of this chaos, Don Nito decided to go to Puerto, while Felix possibly could return to Sinaloa. The destruction of Felix was a golden opportunity for Isabella to influence Benjamin to take over his organization. In exchange for this idea, Isabella asked for 20% of the deal's value. Don Nato and dozens of his loyal men occupied a villa on Puerto's coast. Arriving at Sinaloa, Felix asks for Rodolfo's help, so the governor will help him. Felix asks for a month to prepare everything before he goes abroad, but the governor of Sinaloa only gives him one week.
Felix can stay at his house in the hills, but he has to pay a down payment of $500.000 in advance and another $500,000 by the time Felix reaches the border. When Jane tells his boss Felix has run away to Sinaloa, Ed tells him, Jane was taken back from Guadalajara and returned to America because he thought Jane was too tired with this case. Commander Calderoni and his subordinate will set off to hunt Felix. Jane hopes this commander is successful in avenging the death of Kiki. Felix and his assistant occupy the house lent by the governor. A bar becomes a target for Calderoni to get to where Felix hides. Azul then meets Felix to give him a badge as his new identity for a while. Besides that, he gave him some tape recordings. According to his information, the DFS would be disbanded. Without Felix's knowledge, apparently, the governor leaked information on Felix's hiding place to Calderoni. The governor probably hoped to be considered clean because of this information, but the commander still considered him a dirty bastard. Felix and his subordinate didn't suspect this attack. Felix was about to run away, but the commander was able to catch him. At that time, he admitted that there were seven tapes as a result of interrogation by DEA agents at Kiki. Those tapes contained the names of politicians involved in drug trafficking. One of them was the commander's superior, namely the Minister of Defense Zuno, who received millions of dollars in cash flow. If he died today or tomorrow, the names would start coming out, and he guaranteed the Mexican government would teach Calderoni a lesson because they don't need a hero. The choice is now in Calderoni's hands. If those two tapes are secured, then release him, and Felix will give him two billion dollars. Don Nato and his subordinate didn't expect the attack to come on them. Don Nato, who was listening to music, couldn't move when he was arrested. The five tapes were deliberately found here so that Don Nato became the scapegoat for the kidnapping and murder of Kiki. Don Nito realized the location was found because of Felix. The scene then moved to a place. The cartels gathered to discuss the federation that Felix left. Here, Benjamin invited them because he wanted to be the leader. Suddenly, the Mexican military forces surrounded this location. They didn't expect Felix to come there. Isabella, who was angry again, was told to leave by Felix. Felix claimed he had done his problem, and now the military has become his partner again. Even though he must lose Don Nito and Rafa, now Felix is the king of a more powerful cartel than has ever been recorded in Mexican history. He emphasizes one thing if this federation still belongs to him. When Kiki was held captive, Kiki asked Felix to be released because he gave him all the information he knew. But Felix, who didn't believe, ignored it and ordered his subordinate to finish him. The head of DEA told Jane that they would carry out a secret operation named Leyenda to hunt down the perpetrators associated with Kiki's death. And this time, not the subtle way they would do it. The governor was shocked when Felix sent the pieces to his son's head. With the direct protection of the military, Felix returns to his old home in Sinaloa. After the death of Kiki, the DEA fielded a new team led by Walt Breslin to Mexico for a war against the Cardinals. And after that, the movie continues. The head of the DEA tells Jane that they will carry out a secret operation named Leyenda to exacerbate the culprits associated with Kiki's death. And this time, it's not the subtle way they will do it. The governor is shocked when Felix sends his son's severed head. With direct protection from the military, Felix went back to his old home in Sinaloa. After Kiki's death, DEA deployed a new team led by Walt Breslin to Mexico to fight against the cartel. And after that, the movie continued to season two. At the beginning of the movie, it was shown a doctor named Delgado, who a group of masked men kidnapped. Delgado threatened these kidnappers in the car because he had a relationship with class criminals. It turns out that this kidnapper is Walt Breslin, who deliberately arrested the doctor because he was involved in the murder of Kiki. He was taken to a secret location in Guadalajara, Mexico. They are American special agents assigned to hunt down the criminal gang that killed Kiki. Breslin then played the recording when the doctor and other perpetrators tortured Kiki. He got this tape from his friend in Sia. Breslin wants to know the identity of the other culprit who heard on that record. Felix became more decadent, and now he marries a young woman who used to be in an affair named Danila, and they have a child. A nephew, the Minister of Defense named Zuno, came to represent his uncle because later, at night, he could not attend the party held by Felix. As a government partner, Felix invited three governors who will be present tonight. They discussed the envelope that Felix should have given. However, the business was a little shaky due to political problems due to the earthquake that occurred in Mexico. On September 19, 1985, an earthquake measuring 8.1 on the Richter scale rocked Mexico City. The whole city lay in ruins. 
the government claimed 6,000 people died, but community activists say the number of people who died reached 35,000. At that time, the soldiers were seen as mere spectators to prevent looting. Breslin assigned two DEA agents to take the doctor to the border of Mexico and America in the north. The scene then moves to the Caca Valley, Colombia. Isabella came here to meet one of the cartel bosses to cooperate. Meanwhile, in Tijuana, Arellano family began to experience financial problems because their warehouse became a place for drugs belonging to Sinaloa without compensation. This is one of Benjamin's sisters, named Anadina. Even though he was considered a traitor to Felix, Benjamin and Ramond will come to a party organized by the drug king of Mexico. Felix's accomplice who will come to the party is Chosoloco, Gero, his wife, and the last one, Capo, who asks for his mother's blessing. But Amato, who was in Juarez, was left alone because Acosta was unclear about where he was. Breslin shows the identity card as the DEA special agent, the American ambassador, and comes to meet Ed. Breslin reported that the doctor was on his way to be thrown into La County Prison. It was revealed here that the figure of another perpetrator who tortured Kiki was Captain Sergio Verdin, ex of DFS. Because of his current status as commander of Mexican intelligence, the kidnapping mission would not be as easy as the doctor's. Because the Mexican side has closed the case, there will be legal and diplomatic problems if this operation is leaked. Although several Mexicans are on his team, Breslin believes they are a solid team with one vision. After receiving the green light from his boss, Breslin immediately acts to plan with his team. Because he needs a lot of money for his business rotation, Felix hopes that someone who can help him will come tonight. Isabella finally agrees with the Colombia boss cartel to distribute her illegal drugs. At night, all members of the Cardinal Federation who are under Felix's command are present at the party. Garo and Capo have to look at Benjamin and Ramond, who were called cowards because they licked their spit in front of Felix. That night, the doctor was handed over to U.S. Marshal, who was waiting at the border. Azul told his boss that all the guests were waiting for him. But actually, what Felix was waiting for was an important guest who came by plane. When Felix got off, all the guests greeted him, especially the three governors in the Mexican region who were his partners. And this is the look of Sergio, who is the target of being hunted at DEA. The two bodyguards would always follow Sergio carrying a Walther PPK gun, the quality gun used by Hitler to commit suicide. In this operation, Breslin's colleague from Mexico named Sal would follow the two target cars. To an intersection, Danilo came to do his job with cement powder. When Verdin drove away with limited view, they surrounded Sergio Verdin to be responsible for what he had done to DEA agent. The heavy weapons prepared for this operation. Among them, there was a former member of the MGFP police and a Mexican Jalisco police officer. Felix's new subordinate, Clavel, glanced at a beautiful woman named Guadalupe, who was joining in with Loco and Capo. Suddenly, Capo brings a tiger for Felix's birthday present to symbolize a king in power. Garo then introduced Guadalupe to Felix. Specifically, Benjamin asked Felix to get his family involved again in distributing his goods so that he would benefit. But Felix refused, because this was his decision. The guest is what Felix has been waiting for, finally came. He is Pacho Herrera, one of the Cali Colombia cartel's rulers, came with his bodyguards known to be fierce. After a long wait, finally, Breslin saw their target coming out of his office. Felix is talking about business with Pacho about his job of distributing cocaine owned by the cartel across the border to the location of its destination warehouse. But until now, Felix has yet to receive the payment, which has reached $200 million. Even though for Felix, the value is small, for his men, it is huge. Because of that, Felix hopes Pacho to pay immediately. Here, Pacho didn't reveal the reason but assumed that Felix's organization was experiencing financial problems because arrests had increased by more than 40%. This is all because of the DEA agent who kidnapped and killed him. And Pacho will only pay according to their agreement which means Felix will get the money if they want to pay. It is because they are the ones who made him rich. After Pacho left, Felix told Azul they would have already paid if they had the money. With his current financial condition, Felix can only survive for six months. Paco's answer will always remember by him, and within six months, he will conquer the Colombian who will work for him. When Sergio and a car of his bodyguards are on their way, a pickup car accidentally intercepts them and then pretends to strike. After that, a fan car stopped in the middle of the road, so the car carrying Sergio and his two bodyguards stopped. This DEA team action got delayed because there is civilian passing by. 
Before the target turned around, the DEA team immediately took an action. Two of Sergio's bodyguards were secured, but Sergio stayed in his car. When he heard the sound of a car horn, the bodyguard's car, who was trapped in the pickup car, immediately stepped on the gas. A shootout ensued until the team immediately finished off all of Sergio's bodyguards. After successfully securing Sergio, problems arose because Danilo saw this civilian hiding behind the car, which could be a witness to this operation. And Danilo intends to finish him off, but Breslin decides to take his wallet and threatens to search for him if he doesn't shut up. And then the scene shows Sergio being interrogated by Breslin and his six colleagues to tell who his superiors were involved in Kiki's murder. If he refuses, Breslin will not hesitate to hurt him. As commander of the Mexican Federal Police, Sergio is undaunted. He knows the first rule of interrogation doesn't tell anything on the subject, making him think you know everything. But Sergio sees Breslin not knowing anything. Sergio has concluded that this location is not far because it is only 14 minutes from the area of his kidnapping. Apart from that, a living witness heard them speak English. He ensured that all his men would search the city looking for him before this DEA team got information from him. Scene moves to Matamoros. Felix, who a Mexican soldier guarded, came to the ruler of this area named Don Juan, the cartel boss, whose hobby is cooking, now invites Felix to a location without a military escort. After being beaten to a pulp, Sergio still keeps his mouth shut. As a former DFS who the CIA trained, Sergio doesn't work with violent interrogation like this. On this side river, which became the International Gate, for a long time, since a long time ago, Don Juan distributed his illegal drug, an opium-type drug that America likes, and considers them as friends. It is Rome, the most extensive empire in the world, managed to conquer the barbarians, now Germany, France, and England, and then embraced them to have an identity. For that Felix, when he embraced the illegal drug kingpin of Sinaloa into his empire, was a significant achievement. Before doing business, Don Juan wanted them to get to know each other. Amato saw the construction project in Duares stalled because Acosta wasn't there. Therefore, Amato had to bring him back to solve this problem. Idina showed Benjamin her new acquaintance from America, who could mix cocaine to become something new and generate up to five times the profit. But Benjamin disagrees because Colombia or Felix forbids them from direct contact with American dealers. But Edina remains stubborn because right now, they need income. Their older brother Francisco will be released from prison on the same day. Arriving at Ojinaga, Amato found that Acosta was in the house of a woman named Mimi, who was in Texas. Dozens of times, Breslin hit Sergio, but no names came out of his mouth. Arriving at a house, Amato and his subordinate was shoot by Mimi. Luckily, Acosta, who fixes his roof, shows up and prevents worse. Benjamin is upset that his warehouse is being shared with Felix, but he gets nothing in return. When their truck came, a pig was inside to harass him. Acosta reasoned to Amato that he didn't want to return to Duarez for now because he was having family problems here. Amato ready to deploy 50 people to help destroy his enemy, but Acosta refused and didn't want to tell what was the real problem. Breslin's team had proposed to take Sergio to an American prison, but Breslin refused before he got a name. Because if he arrived in America without giving that name, it would mean that their operation ended. Half-heartedly, Breslin used a knife to cut off Sergio's fingers one by one until he told one of the masterminds. Sergio feels they don't have a wife and child and that they can make a threat. For him, the country is more important than anything else, including his life. He even threatened to do something worse to Danilo and his family than he feels now. Because his anger provoked him, Danilo took a gun and then shot him in the stomach of Sergio. Kenny, shocked, intended to take him to the hospital immediately, but Burslin forbade him. This is where Breslin again threatened Sergio, because within two hours, he would bleed to death, unless he wanted to give a name, and they would help him. That day, Felix saw Don Juan, who was very loved by his inhabitant, even the Americans who served as sheriff, they respected him. Felix then became acquainted with Don Juan's nephew, named Juan Abrego. In an almost dying condition, Breslin again pressed Sergio to mention a meaningful name that became a liaison between Felix and the Mexican government. Finally, he said the name, namely Ruben Zuno Ars, a rich jerk with excellent connections with high-ranking government officials. At night, Don Juan initially refused the cooperation offer from Felix to touch cocaine, because he felt that the opium business he had worked on for a long time was more than enough, and had never been a problem for the Americans. 
But when Felix explained that the Colombians would rule Mexico and could cause riots and fight against each other in this country, Don Juan began to realize that. Felix changed the game by Colombia. He is asking for half of his cargo to be sold north through his network. If the Colombians in America were only 800,000, but Mexicans in America reached 15 million. Don Juan, who was impressed with the vision for the future of Felix, finally agreed to be his partner. When the Arellano family welcomed the freedom of Francisco, Capo and Loco came to their club, until there was a conflict there. At the same time, Isabella came to ask Benjamin to cooperate in her new business, but Benjamin refuses, because Felix also considers her an insignificant person. The DEA team takes Sergio to the hospital and then leaves him. And then, the scene moves to Felix being haunted by the appearance of his first wife, Maria, who says everything has changed, but he can't go back to the past without going back. Amato didn't understand when Acosta asked him to kill someone. They then came to the hospital to take a patient there. Revealed, Zuno married the daughter of the former president of Mexico named Luis Echeverria. Besides her uncle, who became Minister of Defense, she inherited some of the company, and her family are known as benefactors but not for Zuno, whose hobby is snorting illegal drugs. Breslin proffered his report to Ed that one of Zuno's houses was used to take Kiki hostage and kill him. Because he heard the DEA team was hunting him, Zuno hid in Puerto Vallarta with security from his uncle's army. And it turned out that Sergio himself ended up at the morgue. Then what is the plan of Breslin and his team to catch Zuno, who the soldiers surround? After hearing the doctor and Sergio died, Felix called Calderoni, because he didn't know the identity of the DEA team. Calderoni advised Felix to hide as Zuno did. The patient brought from the hospital by Acosta turns out to be a hitman assigned by Air Fallo Furman to kill him. But Amato repeatedly doesn't understand why Furman wants to kill him, because this ridiculous Acosta chooses to sleep under the car. The DEA team lands in Puerto to continue their covered operations. Because of the commotion at his club, Benjamin negotiates with Felix, and the result is he gets a 10% tax on anything Sinaloa transports through the plaza or his cartel. Amato is surprised when some people come. Even Acosta looks like he is about to do a fighting style, the one-on-one -on -one cowboy. It turns out to be a joke, because they are his men who will help fight against Furman's group by bringing a car with heavy weapons. Zuno, who was hiding, got some report. Some American looking at the CCTV spying at this location from two hours ago. Because of worries, Zuno asked for additional troops. Felix was desperate to meet this defense minister at the Congress building to solve America's problem. As a candidate for president of Mexico, he didn't want Felix to come again, which could damage his image because he had a connecting with a drug dealer. With his organization which made more than 200 billion, Felix threatened to withdraw the money from his banks. And if that happens, this country will collapse. That's why, deals with them and protects himself. While Zuno contacts Hotel America to speak to Felix, the secretary there, who Breslin directs, tells her to tell Zuno's whereabouts are already known by America. This is done so that Zuno is frustrated and chooses to leave his hiding place. Their bait succeeded because Zuno decided to run away using his private jet, which the DEA team had planned. When the plane landed, it turned out that Zuno was in the Texas area of America, and Breslin in the pilot's room to escort him. Finally, Zuno could not dodge anymore. Meanwhile, on his way to meet the enemy of his friend, Amato was above the car. Not long after that, a shooting of each other ensued. Furman's group, which became Acosta's enemy, succeeded cleared them out. After Furman shot Acosta, that's when Amato finished him off. Furman actually is the one who saved him when he was a child. But there is a conflict between them after Acosta kills his child, who is considered guilty of stealing. And now the problem is over because of Furman's death. And then the story moved to two years earlier in Texas, America. Breslin learned from Sal that his younger brother was found dead in the car, and an illegal drug package was found beside him. By carrying a drink, Felix comes to the prison in Mexico to meet his old friend. Don Nito was shocked and didn't want to accept his drink because he knew he was imprisoned because of Felix. Don Nito knows Felix visited him because Zuno has been detained in America. And if Zuno speaks, then his life is over. Felix came to talk about his plans after joining the Gulf Cartel, which meant to Don Juan. Felix would force the Colombians to pay him for goods. After his power grew stronger in Mexico, he could release him. But Don Nato thinks it's just nonsense, and it's better for Felix to surrender himself directly to America. Because if he is imprisoned in this place, Rafa will finish him off slowly. In the American prison, Zuno finally admits that his uncle, 
who served as Minister of Defense of Mexico, was involved with a top drug kingpin. The officials of the DEA who are watching this interrogation thanked Breslin for successfully carrying out his mission. The next task was to pressure the Mexican side to surrender those involved in the killing of agent in DEA. The Mexican Minister of Defense agreed with Felix's plan to suppress the Colombian cartel, and so he is ready to deploy his troops. Shortly, he saw the news about Mattis' plane that was shot down in Nicaragua, which indicated that it was related to the CIA. The weapons in the plane were to be sent to the Contra, who fought against the communist Sandinista. Because of this incident, Felix immediately called Mata. When Breslin visits a woman's house, it looks like someone is following him. He came to give a gift, a watch, and talk about his mission in DEA, which caught an important figure in Mexico. In addition, Breslin asked permission to take Danny fishing. After finishing his business, Amato and Acosta returned to continue their project on the foundation in Duarez. After failing to persuade Benjamin, Isabella meets Andina to cooperate in distributing cocaine from Colombia. But Andina refuses because she doesn't want her family to have problems with Felix again. Now, also told when Capo before became cartel boss, he was just a driver and a young man who loved his mother. It can be seen he is helping his mother in the kitchen. While playing billiards with Mata, Felix plans to ask the CIA to bribe them, starting with $10 million. The goal is for the Americans to forget about the DEA agent murder case. Capo tells Loco that he will make a breakthrough by building a tunnel that connects homes in Mexico with America, 400 meters away to distribute their goods. It was seen Breslin taking Danny fishing on a boat. Felix, accompanied by Azul, flew to Nicaragua carrying a suitcase of money to meet the CIA. American Marines had time to look at him because they knew this cartel king was involved in the death of a DEA agent. When the tunnel work was underway, there was action because of the collapse of the supporting pillar. It turned out that this woman was the wife of his late younger brother who died. Breslin sent money to her every month as a form of his concern. It turned out that this caused his younger brother to die because he was an addict. This is also why Breslin really wants to eradicate the illegal drug cartel. Felix was worried when the Marines told him to get on the plane to talk to the CIA agent. When Felix meets this CIA agent, he feels humiliated because the CIA agent doesn't want to take the bribe who brings Felix in his suitcase. Even, the plane machine turns on, so Felix takes it to America to be handed over to DEA. When opened, it turned out to contain a map sheet. Felix, who was smart, claimed a route to bring all the weapons that CIA smuggled to various areas. Because he knew Mattis' plane was shot down, Felix would take over his entire organization and make sure this CIA agent continued to get the weapons and the money. But Felix asks for one condition. The CIA takes care of the DEA so he doesn't get into trouble. At her trial, Zuno claimed to be the house owner who used to be held captive and killed Kiki. But suddenly he dodged if Felix was involved in the murder of the DEA agent. Even he confirmed that he never met Felix. As a result, his testimony surprised the DEA team especially Breslin. When Breslin and the top officials were discussing the following steps, the official of the Minister of Foreign Affairs named Ted suddenly came there. He said that because Zuno, the nephew of the Mexican Minister of Defense, came from the most vital party there, he told them to stop this investigation. That foreign ministry official didn't seem to care about the DEA agents of America who the Mexicans killed. He made it clear to Breslin to withdraw his entire team from Mexico and return to their respective units. Even though the tunnel was closed again, Capo didn't want to give up. He dug again, even though Loco had banned him. Whoever is diligent is the one who wins. That's the principle held by Capo. Acosta and Mimi meet Amato because they agreed to leave the illegal drug business. But Amato confirmed to Mimi that the cartel could not be retired. And they need to be scared if Felix heard this news. Answered already if the person following Breslin was Commander Calderoni. Breslin already knew that Calderoni was Felix's accomplice. He admitted he was forced to do that because of orders from his superiors, but that didn't mean he wanted to let go of Felix. Calderoni realized he would help Breslin as an insider who would give him information to settle this mission so they would carry out his actions. Breslin felt unsure, but he still took Calderoni's name card. After several rejections, finally, Anadina agreed to transport the cocaine and work with Isabella. When the tunnel work continued, Capo and Loco got support from their boss, namely Palma. The Mexican military finally catches Mata. It turns out that Felix leaked the location of Mata's hiding place to DEA through the Minister of Defense. DEA took this step to stifle America, and the Minister of Defense could gain the trust of his party again.
He sacrificed Mata for his business interests, and the result was that Felix got his new partner, namely the CIA. Initially, Breslin's team would pack up to return to America because their mission stooped in the middle of their mission. But Breslin had another way when he saw Calderoni's business card as the Mexican Federal Judicial Police. And then we can see Commander Calderoni explain the organizational structure of the Mexican cartel working with Felix. One important thing they had to know was the conflict between the Tijuana cartel, led by the Benjamin brothers, and the Sinaloa cartel. Finally, Palma broke off his relationship with Benjamin. And because of that, Sinaloa withdrew 400 kilos of their illegal drugs from Benjamin's warehouse. Even though he couldn't find the truth of Calderoni's information could not be proven, Breslin asked them to keep Calderoni as an informant, which still had to be verified. Anadina explained to Isabella that her plan to smuggle drugs was to use the Tijuana women workers who go in and out of Mexico and America daily. These workers belong to one company. Even with a significant pay cut, they don't complain. Anadina has bought the company, and she employs the women as couriers to bring cocaine for $500 payment. Even though it only carries a quarter of a kilo per person, every day, the number of people crossing the border reaches 35,000. At the moment, they can employ 700 people as couriers. And that means about 200 kilos they can distribute every day. Loco and Capo pull their illegal drugs from Benjamin's warehouse, which can cause a bigger problem. At that time, Breslin and his team followed those trucks. Meanwhile, Amato, who is busy supervising the construction of the runway in Juarez, is surprised by arrival of Felix to ask him to fly to Panama. In his private jet, Felix will meet with the Gulf Cartel, now his partner, and the Colombian side. Panama was chosen because it is considered a neutral place. Felix wants to expel Colombia from the retail cocaine business in America because he wants to be the ruler who controls them. Controlling the transportation route, Juarez will be the center of the distribution. Therefore, he will choose Amado to be the head of the operation. Pablo Escobar Cali and PRI party will be in his grip. After a long time of following, Breslin and his team see the truck enter the warehouse, but they don't know the cartel is planned. After arriving at one of the hotels in Panama, Felix got acquainted with the security team, who checked the entire room. He is George Salcedo. Shortly, Pacho and his friends arrived, but Felix looked worried because until now, Don Juan had not come. Amado had time to whisper to leave this place. Felix was even more surprised when Pacho told him he had made a deal with Don Juan. This made Felix feel stabbed in the back. There was no choice. Felix changed his plans. He wanted Pacho to send more of his products. Because Felix challenged him in a few months, Pacho was about to deliver his 70 tons of illegal drugs. After leaving, Amado wonders Felix how they transported his load so much. When Felix contacts Don Juan, he looks chill and not scared because he changed his deal with Felix. This older man decided to run his own business like Felix did with Colombia. This made Felix get angry, but Don Juan was unmoved at all. After that truck goes back to go, his team goes back to following. But Breslin will see the warehouse's contents. Loco reported to Palma that they had trouble with the ventilator, which made it difficult for the tunnel workers to breathe. Breslin then climbed up to the top of the warehouse gate, but saw nothing there. Capo asked the worker to fix the ventilator immediately. When they got into the car, Sal saw the fan spinning. Therefore, Breslin wanted to wait until night to see directly inside. Idana and Isabella managed to make their first delivery through these female couriers. That night, Breslin and his colleagues saw one of the workers coming out of the ground. Finally, they knew this cartel gang had built a tunnel from Mexico to America to distribute illegal drugs. Initially, they planned to catch workers in American territory with evidence of illicit drugs. But Calderoni had another suggestion to destroy the Empire of Felix and pitted them against each other. Even though Kenny firmly disagreed, Breslin supported the suggestion. Benjamin was surprised when he was told about the tunnel construction being carried out by Sinaloa. Feeling that his territory and pride had been trampled on, he sent Ramond and dozens of his fully armed men. The workers were forced out by arriving there, while Kappa was still in the tunnel because he heard something was wrong. The DEA team watched that incident from afar. Doesn't enough just input the sand. Ramon throws a grenade until Capo and his subordinate run to the tunnel door in American territory. The DEA team was shocked when they saw the workers killed by Ramond. He had just landed in Mexico. Felix received information that Don Juan backing the candidate for president of Mexico from the PRI party, who currently serves as the budget secretary. The Minister of Defense failed to be nominated because his nephew, Zuno, was imprisoned. 
On the way home, Felix's car was shot by a sniper. Luckily, Felix survived from that incident. And then the scene shows Felix coming to meet the brother of the Mexican presidential candidate, who was carried by the PRI party to invite him to cooperate. He emphasized loyalty was far more critical. And because of that, he and his younger brother had considered Don Juan a loyal friend since they were children. This meant that he refused offers and bribes from Felix. Azul then reported the conflict between Capo and Ramond, who attacked each other because of the tunnel problem. Felix who confused about his primary concern, Felix told Azul to call Benjamin and Palma to solve this problem by paying taxes. Calderoni again explained to the DEA team about Felix's meeting with Colombia in Panama to send more illegal drugs. In addition, the project to build a runway in Juarez, under Amato's command, is under construction, including buying a passenger plane to make their cargo load much larger. The team followed Amato, who flew to Belize to buy an airplane being auctioned off by a bankrupt airline company. Freslin asked he to be sent new equipment to support their mission. As Felix orders, Palma finally sends Loco to make peace with Benjamin's side. He chose to meet with Francisco to negotiate to resolve their conflict. Breslin and his team, joined in the auction, plan to infiltrate the plane that Felix will later use to distribute his illegal drugs. Amato is buying some of these planes, like he bought a burger. Benjamin and his brothers get information about the shooting that happened to Felix. Azul tells essential information to Felix that the brother of the presidential candidate is rich man who is included in Forbes magazine as one of the wealthiest people in the world. So they no longer need the bribe offered by Felix. In the evening, the DEA team managed to get into one of the planes Amato bought to set up a tracking device that Asi did. Benjamin pressured Felix because he knew Felix's organization was becoming more fragile. Moreover, he knew Felix would be attacked and killed in Guadalajara. The question is, what Benjamin wants. After arriving at Juarez, the team immediately followed that plane with the guideline and the tracking device they installed. And then Felix meets with Palma to discuss the issue of this conflict. Breslin and his team finally found the plane's landing. It looks like Amato just got off the plane he bought. This is where the team will monitor the movement of the Cardinal Felix. Palma is surprised when Felix tells him that Loco will not return from Tijuana. Does that mean the conditions that Benjamin wants to resolve the conflict? When Loco stopped his vehicle, Ramond and his subordinates suddenly appeared to finish off Palma's subordinate. Even though Felix had known Loco for 20 years, this still had to happen. Maria was surprised when Felix, who was thrown at her, suddenly came to her house. From the top of that hill, the team saw six fuel trucks for the six planes that Felix bought. They were sure Felix would send the illegal drugs at once. It seemed Felix was desperate. Breslin had time to consider burning it because he was sure Felix would die from an angry Columbia. Then will Palma avenge the death of Loco? And then seeing Palma and Acosta discuss Loco's murders committed by Benjamin with Felix's approval. They feel that Felix is no longer defending him. And because of that, Palma invites Acosta to leave the Federation. Acosta sees Felix more hopeless since they had a relationship with Colombia, and the desperate people will die soon. This phone conversation was recorded by Aguilar, who is loyal to Felix. Without Palma's knowledge, his wife Guadalupe cheats on him with Clavel. Felix tries to approach Maria again when he is in cafe, but Maria, really offended, doesn't want to care again about him. Breslin got a task from Ed to meet a woman who called the American Embassy. The woman who lives in Ojinaga claims to have information about Felix and his cardinal network. Felix meets Defense Minister Andres after he receives a firm refusal from the presidential candidate of Mexico and his brother. Because of that, Felix had plans to meet his rival Cardenas, who previously served as a member of the PRI party. Andres reminded that if Cardenas left the PRI, it was precisely because he saw drug kingpins involved in politics. He was sure Cardenas was favored in the presidential election of Mexico. Andres brought Felix to the center of a national political election information system. Based on the results of the calculations, Cardenas received support in many big cities and educational centers. Meanwhile, PRI's influence persists in the sparsely populated countryside. In Mexico City, Cardenas gets an advantage of up to 54%. With a campaign strategy that Cardenas does, it means PRI will be destroyed. With this accurate data, Felix again lobbied his brother, the presidential candidate from PRI. Finally, he is willing to meet in the lobby of the hotel. Felix reasoned he did all this so he and Andres would not end up in American prisons. Breslin meets the woman who turns out to be Mimi, an American citizen. At first, 
Breslin didn't care. But when Mimi said that her boyfriend was Acosta, who controlled one of the Felix plazas, Breslin believed that. Breslin had to sit in a pickup car to meet Acosta while his head was covered in burlap sacks. Azul contacted Felix about Palma's betrayal plan, who invited Acosta to leave the Federation and form his organization. Felix, who was angry, told Azul to kill Palma. But for Acosta himself, it was unclear what is his decision. After meeting in his roof house, Acosta asks, What Breslin purpose wants to chase Felix? He answered, Felix already killed the DEA agent. Acosta feels everything has changed after the emergence of cocaine in Colombia and a jerk politician. Even though he used to enjoy it. Even though his business was just marijuana. After Breslin talked about his younger brother, who was an addict shot three times in his chest, then Acosta understood the true purpose of this DEA agent who wanted to make changes. Acosta finally agreed to bring Breslin. And in return, Breslin will grant him protection and invulnerability wherever he goes. After giving his card name, Acosta informs him that even his brother died with a needle in his hand. Felix met a woman appointed by the brother of the Mexican presidential candidate. She showed him the projected vote count in each region that could make the candidate lose. Felix threatened to tell Cardenas this vital information. Unless, Felix made another program that declared Cardenas lost before the elections occurred. This opinion would lead the people who previously supported Cardenas to turn to support his candidate. She agrees with Felix's innovative thinking and asks what Felix wants in return. He wants a direct relationship with the new government and his interests are always protected. But this woman warns that if his words are a lie, then Felix will be destroyed. After hearing the plan for the murder of Palma, Felix's driver immediately told Guadalupe. Mimi took Breslin back to where he was before. She hoped their plan would work because she was pregnant. Guadalupe tells Palma immediately what will happen to him. At the same time, Azul comes to finish him. Palma already knows he has killed two of Azul's subordinates. After that, Palma and Azul were involved in the shootout. Amada was shocked when he got information about Acosta's problem. Back to his lodgings, Breslin waited by Calderoni and asked for information on the progress of their investigation. Calderoni already knew about the platform Felix used to carry his cargo. Because he didn't trust this person, Breslin limited the information. Felix assigns Moreno to manipulate data about sound projection so that his goal is successful. Acosta is so chill when Amato comes to him after knowing what happened to Palma. Amato hopes that Acosta will follow his advice to improve his relationship with Felix, but Acosta refuses. Calderoni reports to Felix about the DEA agent investigating his runway. Acosta revealed the entire Mexican cartel organization led by Felix to an American newspaper called Syntax. Azul tells Felix about Palma's escape because of Clavel's affair with his wife. Acosta became prey to the entire cartel, including America, because of the published article. Breslin then looked for Mimi at her house, but what happened he was hit from behind by an FBI agent. They claimed to cooperate with the Mexican federal police to search for Acosta. Even though the Acosta article influenced the election, Felix and the top officials of this party had to continue their plan. Moreno, responsible for the projection, had made a duplicate snipe showing fake election results by changing the password. Palma, who was hiding, asks for help from Capo taking care of his wife's children. Because of the attack on him, Palma wants to kill Felix. Felix is shocked when Capo from Colombia tells him his cocaine 70 ton is ready to be transported. And then Felix tells Maria about the 70 ton cargo taken from Colombia and hopes that Maria will support him. Mimi finds the location of the hideout of Acosta, who previously chose to stay away from him. Meanwhile, Amado was busy preparing his plane because Felix would be transporting 70 tons of illegal drugs on Friday. Acosta had already placed dozens of his fully armed subordinates in his hometown if an attack happened to him. All the election results from various areas will be input into the computer in this main room. Besides the polling officers and journalists, representatives from the candidates are watching the vote count. Mimi tells Breslin Acosta that location is hiding because she worries about his safety. Andres secretly asks Moreno to show the results of his fake votes. It was recorded that PRI lost heavily in Mexico City. For a moment, the people were excited because PRI was considered to have won in Mexico City because of the fake data. Supervisors from the presidential candidate Cardenas saw something strange on the computer because there were two different displays. Before the illegal actions they were carrying out were exposed, Andres immediately bathed the electricity. At the same time, Amato ordered his subordinate to check the path power on this plane to fix the problem. 
When Breslin asks Mimi to show the whereabouts of Acosta, suddenly, helicopters from the FBI and Mexican Federal Police attack this village, and a dozen of Acosta's subordinates are massacred at this location. From the roof of his house, Acosta takes on the resistance. Felix and Andres are in a stalemate because their plan with the computer has failed. Due to the dangerous situation, Breslin told Mimi to hide in the church while he found a way to save Acosta. Breslin then asked Calderoni for help so he could take Acosta out safely. But Calderoni had his own goals. If he can finish off Acosta, Felix will trust him even more. After being traced, Amato found a tracking device in his plane. Dead and on the verge of collapse, Felix has the ultimate move. He will change the ballot result in every area. He contacted Capo to ask for help. He will help Felix as long as Palma can come back. After that, Felix also got Benjamin who asked for more in return for cocaine. Back to the Acosta hunting location, because he didn't want to give himself up. Acosta and the rest of his men were still fighting back. That's when Breslin decided to come in to persuade him. Breslin persuaded Costa to go with him so that he could get complete immunity. Breslin doesn't want him to die ridiculously in this place, especially since Mimi is pregnant. Surprised after hearing that, Acosta finally agrees. When Breslin comes out to take him, Calderoni insists on catching Acosta. Meanwhile, Felix's gang starts to act to change the value of the vote count so that the PRI candidate qualifies to become the next president. Unexpectedly, Acosta chose to die there. Because of this incident, Breslin began to doubt Calderoni's real purpose. Amato hears about the death of his best friend. The PRI candidate who supports Felix finally becomes the president of Mexico. After his success, Maria is soft and willing to accept his lunch with Felix. Breslin realizes the tracking device on the plane is not visible. And then the scene moves to Felix, who is in Sinaloa, and persuades Maria to join him in a meeting with the new president of Mexico and the officials. Don Juan is surprised when Felix plans to simultaneously transport 70 tons of illegal drugs. If he succeeds, it will be dangerous for them. Breslin immediately reiterates his plan to destroy the illicit cargo illegal drugs to the whole team. They agreed to continue this mission because this was a big step to beating Felix. 70 tons of the illegal drugs started arriving on the new runway Siavas who received a motto from Pacho's trusted man. Went back to the DEA team, who were preparing their weapons for this critical mission. Meanwhile, Felix and Maria are ready for an important event with the Mexican officials. Amato's subordinate wonders why he was assigned to reinstall the tracking device. Felix feels that he is already at the top because he is in the same room with essential people in this country, especially the new president of Mexico. It's been seen one by one that the planes are landing and moving his cargo. The DEA team started to paralyze the gang one by one, the cartel was on guard there to hack the car. After that, they began to move for the siege. They started pouring petrol on those illegal drugs, but when they checked, it turned out it wasn't illegal drugs. The DEA team had been trapped. The cardinal troops who much more a lot, immediately shot the team. One by one, Breslin's subordinates fell. Asi, who is now dying, asked to be lifted into the car. And this is what happened. The remaining team was able to escape to the top of the mountain. And Matt, who was behind, got shot. But Breslin forbade his team to save him. Suddenly, Calderoni appeared and shot dead the two cardinal gangs. Even he sees Calderoni kill a Matt, securing his position. Breslin saw very clearly what had been done by Calderoni. Calderoni reasoned this Breslin's own mistake. He allowed Breslin to go from here. Breslin returns to headquarters because his mission has failed. Only two members are left. Shortly, Breslin was at the headquarters of the DEA in Washington, D.C. Because of the heartbreaking incident in Mexico, his superiors decided to end this secret operation. Felix was the one who succeeded, with 70 tons of illegal drug cargo. Each plaza received 17.5 kilograms. He also thanked Amato for successfully carrying out his duties. The officer successfully ambushed an illegal drug warehouse in America. Capo meets Felix, asking for forgiveness for Palma, because his members respect him. But it seems Felix has other plans. Breslin is now on duty in California, seeing the news about the disclosure of 20 tons of illegal drugs worth billions of dollars belonging to Colombia in Simar. Because of this incident, Benjamin's family worries that Colombia will not pay for their business. Because of this problem, Pacho then flies to Guadalajara to meet Felix. This time, Felix is angry with Pacho because the $200 million that Pacho had to pay failed because the warehouse was revealed. When Pacho offered the price of his services, increased to $4,000 per kilo, 
This time, Felix refused. Felix wanted the payment to be replaced with half the load. If Pacho disagreed, he could use the Canadian route. It turned out that Azul disagreed with Felix's plan, and the cardinal bosses under him. Agenda meeting with them, then scheduled to have a level discussion. Clavel meet Guadalupe at the motel where she was hiding. He said Palma's problem was over, and she could return to her house. While on the way, they stopped on the bridge. It turned out that Felix's driver killed Palma's wife and his children. This order came directly from Felix. The cardinal bosses were absolutely shocked when they heard this information, especially Capo. The same attack also does to Don Juan's house. Maria decided to chase Felix away from her house. Because of his ambition, Felix was on the verge of his collapse. In that meeting, Felix reveals his ambitious plan to sell his illegal drugs directly to America and drive Colombians out of the market. It is revealed here that Felix gave the Americans the information about the Simar warehouse. Felix was shocked because no members of the Federation were willing to be involved with his interest. Start from Benjamin, Capo, and Azul chose to leave, which surprised him. Amato also declared himself out of the Federation. He and Aguilar would take over Guerres. Cartel Cali decided to choose Amato over Felix. Felix is wholly destroyed. Isabella, who previously worked with Enidina, was finally kicked out by the Arellano brothers' family. She felt humiliated. Isabella threw away her severance check and refused to leave Tijuana. Felix, who is down, is finally arrested by Commander Calderoni. He was thrown into a Mexican prison. At the same time, Calderoni asked Breslin to come because he felt a debt of gratitude to him. The Americans called this operation a great victory. But Breslin felt dissatisfied. Isabella was surprised when the Mexican police arrested her because of orders from Enidina. Clavel himself finished off by Palma because of his passionate actions. Cartel leaders met and agreed they would manage their businesses independently in their respective regions and respect each other. Breslin finally changes the assignment to El Paso and became Jane, who used to be Kiki's boss. Breslin then asks permission to come to the prison to meet Felix. He showed Kiki's photo so that Felix would remember what he had done. Felix was not the only perpetrator, but he also refused to mention the name because it meant the same as suicide. Felix said that there would soon be a war between cartels will happen because basically, they will fight for power. Apart from Tijuana and Sinaloa, he has to remember Amato, who can become the most potent illegal drug dealer in this country. He guarantees a big mess will happen, and that's where Breslin will miss him. And after that, the movie continues to see Felix says it won't be long before a war between the cartels will happen, because basically, they will be fighting each other for power. Besides Tijuana and Sinaloa, he has to remember Amato, who can become the most powerful drug dealer in the country. He guarantees a big mess will ensue, and that's where Breslin will miss him. And the story continues. The film's beginning shows a flying plane trying to make an emergency landing because the engine caught fire. The plane finally managed to land, and the pilot turned out to be Amato, who was carrying a drug load. Suddenly, military troops in the area came to arrest them. Shootout and the chase ensued until finally Amato got caught. This commander refused the drugs and money offered by Amato to bribe him. Amato was arrested to be thrown into prison, and its evidence was immediately burned. Breslin looks to join a community to share the life story of his older brother, who had died. One of the participants is a man named Mike, who offers a job to Breslin to become a container driver through his acquaintance. It turns out to be this DEA agent is undercover to investigate drug smuggling. This time, it was shown a group of robbers wearing masks carrying out money grabs from a group of gangsters. They were there and killed, but one was shot and died when trying to escape. Because heard the sound of a police siren, the body of his friend named Louise was left at the crime scene. It turned out that these robbers were the Juarez police. The leader of this action is mustachioed police named Victor, and one of his friends is Rogelio, who immediately distributes the money, including rations for their captain. Breslin, who served in El Paso with Jame. Until now, they had not heard about Amado's track record, which became cartel boss in Juarez, Mexico. After three months of languishing in Chihuahua prison, finally, Amato was released. Because there were no colleagues or his men to pick him up, Amato drove the public transport. This woman is a wife of Breslin named Danny. Aguilar, who met through Amato, reasoned that he had assigned someone to pick him up. Amato was distraught because Aguilar took up to three months to free him. All this time, they supplied illegal drugs to the El Paso area of America. But Aguilar refused Amato's proposal to open a warehouse there. This is where at the beginning of the division of the two cardinals bosses of Guarez began to see. 
an older woman named Mrs. Berrigan asked for help from Victor because her niece, Teresa, didn't come home for four days. This corrupt cop was given money because she knew how it worked, and this woman hoped Victor could find her. Amato, who just arrived, was surprised because his house was being renovated. Some of his subordinates were seen as having a small party driven by his trusted assistant, Manny. He said a woman named Marisol had called several times to talk to him. After hearing bad news from his ex-wife, Amato rushed to Sinaloa. It turned out that his daughter, Anna, passed away because of asthma. Meanwhile, the DEA team discussed plans to arrest the Juarez gang at a used car dealership. Breslin would disguise himself as a truck driver transporting Colombian cocaine from the pickup site. After their target had gathered there, Breslin would signal by asking cigarette, and that's when the team would raid them. The main question is, who is the boss of the Goras cartel? Is Rafael Aguilar or Amado Carrillo? Only imprisoned for three months? Aguilar and Amado are on a hill, and right below it is a slum area where they control the land. They both met Carlos Hank, nicknamed El Professor. Starting from a rural teacher, Hank, then joining the PRI party. From the mayor of Mexico City to the governor to the cabinet secretary. He is also a politician who built a banking company and transportation and has billions of dollars in wealth. The reason is that poor politicians are bad politicians. His role in the PRI party is crucial. Even though the presidents take turns, Hank's position is irreplaceable. He gets all the benefits without dirtying his hands. Hank aims to buy this slum area for a development project, but Aguilar refuses. Even though he doesn't know dealing with an important person who even the president bows down to him. Seeing his friend's reaction, Amado chooses to be silent. Right in El Paso and Varez's border area, the DEA team started to carry out their mission. When Mike introduces Breslin to his acquaintance named Fernie, Breslin almost asks for a cigarette to Mike as a code for Gene to drop his team. But Breslin's plan was postponed after he saw some fan cars come out of there. While pretending to go to the toilet, Breslin asked his team to follow those two fan cars. Mike then tasked Breslin to move the trailer to the back of the workshop. The problem arose because Breslin could not drive this trailer. Breslin was forced to ask Mike to calm down because he was a DEA agent. Breslin explained to Jane that he was very confident in the car that the fan was full of money because he saw armed guards. The proof was that the fan's car went into Juarez territory. Besides the evidence of the illegal drugs, Breslin asked for Jane's approval to reveal the warehouse of their money and then confiscate it. When Amato and Aguilar came to find the culprit, that's where the team will catch them at El Paso. Breslin apologized to Mike because he had to end up in jail. Amato appeared when Aguilar was at a bar and immediately killed them. After that, Amato met Hank to give him a land certificate in the slum area for free. Amato only wanted Hank to accept his business proposal, which was being prepared. Hank had time to refuse, but brilliant Amato knew that Hank had a circuit in Tijuana that washed millions of dollars belonging to the Arellano brothers. Business cooperation like that is what Amato wants from Hank. After Breslin gets information about Aguilar's death, he knows Amato is the culprit. Victor came to the morgue to look for the woman who was reported missing. And then we can see Breslin explaining to all his team about a fan car that allegedly transports money belonging to the Gorez cartel every week. And tonight is their mission to rob the money, but it must be kept secret from the El Paso police for the next big task. This time, we are introduced to a beautiful journalist named Andrea, who is in charge of one of the newspapers La Voz in Tijuana, which supports justice. Andrea wanted to publish news about the wedding of Andina Arellano and Claudio, a well-known lawyer. But her boss was disappointed, because if it was only a marriage, according to him, it was not important news. Because of that, Andrea had to prove that what she posted there was another element. On the wedding day, Benjamin and Remond were also happy with their sister's marriage. It looks Azul, Capo, and Palma were also there. But their friend Rayo could have inhaled drugs during this event. After Felix was caught, Mexican cartel running their respective businesses in each area. Their business skyrocketed to $4 billion in a year. And then this man in a cowboy hat is an independent smuggler named Ismael El Mayo. Benjamin asked him to work together because he saw great potential in this cowboy. Don Juan and his nephew, Juan Abrego, were also seen attending this party. Even though these two cartels were often involved in conflicts. Between these Mexican cartels, Pacho became the smallest cartel and almost went bankrupt because Tijuana controlled the border. When the party is in progress, Rayo, who is drunk, makes trouble by badmouthing the groom. Couldn't be forgiven anymore. 
Ramond immediately takes Rayo out of the party place. Andrea, hiding in the car, sees Rayo being beaten and brought into the park, but the officers there forbade her to enter. At that moment, Rayo's head was thrown into the pool to death. The DEA team, who is ready to run their operation, can't move because the fan car they are waiting for has not yet arrived. Suddenly, the officer came to the team from the Homicide Division, who informed that they found several bodies of the used car dealership owners. The team immediately moved to the dealer's location, but they did not find anything. Andrea, supervising the party location, saw a judge named Soto coming out of there. Breslin looked frustrated because it turned out that the Juarez cartel gang had emptied the dealership without his knowledge. For four months, Breslin worked hard to investigate this case, but all was in vain. Because Breslin could not control his emotions, Jane gave him a punishment for a week. Ramond and his friends continued the party at a nightclub. Only because a man accidentally touched them, Ramond beat him all out, including Ramond's friends Alfredo and his younger brother Alex who turned out to be the son of Judge Hodoyan. Andrea, who was following Ramond, saw this incident clearly. After feeling unsuccessful several times, Breslin plans to move to Chicago along with Enidina, who got a job offer there. The cleaning that was carried out at El Paso was on Amato's orders, because previously, Aguilar wanted Amato to be caught again. And then seen, Azul and Palma came to meet Capo, because the truck containing their shipment was intercepted in the desert of the Imperial Valley by the Tijuana cartel because they had not paid the ship's tax. Capo, who gets angry, wants to snatch it from Benjamin, but they disagree. After the beating incident at the nightclub, Andrea came to Judge Hodoyan. Andrea aimed to interview him regarding the incident, but the judge's wife kicked her out. While having breakfast, it was seen that the relationship between Hodoyan and his two sons was not good. They were all involved in an illegal drug cartel. Amato, who has the ambition to build his organization with the cartels again, started to run his plan. The first step was to clean up people loyal to Aguilar who could mat his big plans dangerously. This task was given to his younger brother, Vicente, who was an expert in eliminating people. And for logistical problems, it was handed over to Gerardo Coral, who had a degree in finance from El Paso. Palma and his team met Ismael, who was busy being a shrimp fisherman. The three of them needed Ismael's help to convey his intention to buy the Imperial Valley from Benjamin's hands as their entry point to America. Ismael promised that they manage the meeting, but he refused to join every cartel and chose to be independent. Breslin, who plans to move to Chicago, started to prepare his submission sheet, but he hasn't told this to Jane. Andrea and her colleague Isaac followed the judge's car to enter the racing casino track and met Benjamin. Andrea then conveyed these findings to her colleagues and superiors. The fact is the Tijuana cartel funds used for city development projects from drug profit. The city's elite gain wealth and the drug cartels gain influence and security. Satisfied with this result, the owner of the La Vaz newspaper assigns Andrea to continue her job. Because he needs additional money, Victor and Rogelio snatch cash from the hands of youths who violate traffic rules. Rogelio has plans to become a drug dealer, but Victor disagrees. When he returned home, Victor was intercepted by Breslin because he knew the Gorez police were a business in two countries. Breslin already holds information about the robbery committed by Victor and three of his colleagues that killed Luis. This DEA agent would not bring up the matter if Victor had worked with him to uncover the Amato network that controls Duarez. Victor admitted that he did not know anything at all, but Breslin forced him even give him some money so that Victor would become his informant. Amato flew to Cali meet Popcho. Because he is busy rebuilding his organization, he has not been able to distribute the illegal drugs sent by Popcho. Because he is disappointed, Pacho threatens to hand over all his goods to the Arellano brothers. Palma, Azul, and Kappa meet with Benjamin to convey their plan to buy the Imperial Valley. Even though it is a barren desert, they meant enough. Benjamin decided to rent it out at $3 million a year, and they could immediately rent it for two years. They were disappointed, especially Capo, but because they had no other choice, Palma finally accepted it. While they were away, Benjamin invited Capo to attend his birthday party. He did not give up on his threat. Amato again met the Pacho to ask for time to fix the organization. From the two months he asked, Pacho gave one month to Amato. Still in his office, Breslin needed clarification about whether he would move to Chicago or stay in El Paso. To hunt down Amato, Felix predicted becoming the Mexican cartel's next king. Finally, Breslin submitted his transfer application to Jane. Victor came to the crime scene and found a woman who was murdered. He was worried that the woman was Teresa, 
who he was looking for, but was not. The forensic doctor making the identification told him that last night a female victim was also found who was allegedly forced to become a prostitute. When the Arellano brothers were having a party at a nightclub, some police came who he thought were asking for bribes. When his subordinate was asked to give money, he saw something strange. Capo and dozens of his assistants outside the club are disguised as police. It was Capo's plan to kill Benjamin and his brothers. A shootout ensued. Many members of the Tijuana cartel were victims. Benjamin and his brothers tried to get out of this location. Capo and his subordinate continue to hunt them. And Claudio dies because Capo shoots him. Hundreds of bullets were shot when they hid in the kitchen. Luckily, Benjamin's men came to save them. Capo escaped when federal police went to that place. When it was about to move to a safer location, Anadina was shocked because she did not find her husband. During grief, because her husband was killed, Anadina wanted a head of the culprit. And then, the scene shows the combined team, the Colombian army, and the American DEA team managing to surround Pablo Escobar's hideout. After going through the shootout, that illegal drug lord of Colombia was shot by a sniper from special forces when he tried to escape. Colombia and the whole world were shocked by this event, including Amato, who saw it on television. He immediately called Pacho and Cali to make an appointment to discuss their next steps. The system which builds by Amato is starting to run. A young man in Duarez was assigned to be a courier to bring the illegal drug to El Paso, America. After his car was hit at a traffic light, he found 34 kilos in it. The DEA team who interrogated him got information that he only got orders, and then called his number, and a robotic voice would tell him when to pick it up. After Capo's plan to kill the Benjamin brothers fails, he and Azul meet Ismael again to invite him to join. Ismael again refused his offer. Because of his big problem, he advised Capo to ask for Amato's help and hide for a while. Amato then had a meeting with three drug bosses from the Cali cartel. Besides Pacho, there was Gilberto and Chep. Amato invited them to work together because they must quickly adapt after Pablo Escobar was destroyed. Amato wants payment with cocaine because he is very sure the DEA team has taken down Pablo Escobar's photo and is now displaying their photo. After all, Cali is the next target, different from their predecessors like Escobar and Felix. Amato wants to ally with this Cali cartel to build a profit-making business. These three Cali cartel officials are pretty satisfied with Amato's presentation but they need to consider it first. And then, Amato is just waiting for Gilberto's decision. After Benjamin declares war with Sinaloa, he asks Baron's help to gather his troops from the San Diego American Gangster Group. Andrea explained to her leader, Salgado, how Benjamin laundered his money at a Vista de Oro casino, which Carlos Hank owned. Because it is not easy to uncover the crimes of one of the essential people in this country, Andrea needs to get strong evidence. It was revealed here that this newspaper was founded by Salgado and his friend, who was a columnist. At the time, his friend once wrote a column insulting family member of Carlos Hank. Shortly, his friend was killed. Two bodyguards turned themselves in, and the case was closed without further investigation. Salgado then fought back by publishing news accusing Hank. Since then, Salgado has been considered a hero. When he was chilling out with his colleagues, Victor met with a homicide detective named Sam to discuss the many murder cases that occurred among young girls that a psychopath carried out. After waiting a long time, Amato, who is in Cuba, gets good news from Pacho. Because Gilberto received a proposal to work together, Pacho reminded him that another plaza would be angry with Amato's breakthrough, so he must be prepared for it. During his excitement, Amato meets a sexy woman and they are doing sex education. Capo, hiding in Guadalajara, intends to go to Juarez to meet Amato, because he needs Sinaloa to be back in operation. Ramond and Benjamin, who already know Capo's plan to leave Guadalajara, plan to finish him off at the airport with the help of Baron's troops. Victor continues his investigation, and this time he returns to the morgue to see another female victim who died in the same way as was done by a serial killer. From the victim's goods, Victor found a worker's card showing that this woman was a worker at a factory. While Capo was going to the airport, Ramond and Baron were ready with his troops. Exactly when Capo arrived there, one of the Ramon's men, named Chivo, saw him, and he immediately shot Capo. But his shot was missed, and Chivo was shot dead by the police guarding Capo. A shootout ensued when Ramond and his men arrived. Capo and his men tried to escape, but oh because of the heavy traffic, they were forced to hide. Dozens of civilians became victims of this attack. Capo then escapes to the airport. Brutally, Ramond killed civilians who has no sin.
because the police came there, Ramond and his men leave this airport, while Capo can escape. That makes us surprised by the bishop named Juan, who became one of the victims of the war between the two cardinals, until the news went viral throughout Mexico. Amado again met with Hank, because he considered this tragic event to be a good opportunity for him to secretly run a business. At this time, what was being attention was Tijuana and Sinaloa, and just let them fight. Because for him, chaos brings opportunity. And then we can see the president for the first time visiting the Great Church of Mexico to pay his last respects to the cardinal who died in an attack. Outside the church, the people of Mexico a demonstration for pressured the government to immediately eradicate the illegal drug cartels involved in this bloody tragedy. Not long after, the Arellano brothers from Tijuana and then Palma, Azul, and Capo from Sinaloa were declared fugitives. Anyone who provided information on their whereabouts would receive a reward of up to a million dollars. The DEA team was contacted by the Mexican party for help with their hunt. This case will be handled directly by a general from the Mexican army named Hector Rapallo. This general also turns out to catch Amado when his plane crashes in Chihuahua and then burns the illegal drugs and his money. And then what is Breslin's plan with this offer from Mexico? Because of his status as a fugitive, Capo says goodbye to his mother and girlfriend to go to Guatemala. Meanwhile, Tiguan had handed over two of Baron's men to the authorities to be used as sacrifices. They felt they owned a great person behind him. Benjamin wanted to use them to secure his position. Andrea came to the Guadalajara airport to seek information about that incident. It turns out that one of the Tesa planes keeps flying when at the incident in order of the police to the Tijuana. Even though the situation is precarious, Alfredo and his friend delivers the illegal drugs to the border by Benjamin's order. By riding his S-Class car, Alfredo feels sure it will not be suspected. Alex, who is still likes a child, is starting to be influenced by wanting to take part in the delivery. Danny is disappointed when Breslin decides to go to Tijuana to continue the work for several months even though he had promised to come with her to Chicago. Upon arrival at the Mexican border in Guatemala, Capo gave a bag of money to the Guatemalan soldiers who guarded the border so he could take refuge in this country. However, it turned out that this soldier was going to inform the district commander because a wanted fugitive in Mexico has arrived. Victor got information from Teresa's aunt that her niece was the last she saw when taking her on the bus to go to work at one of the spare parts factories. Benjamin and his younger brother have been waiting for a long time for someone named Pastor Bays who can connect them to the politician. But until now, he is never seen which made them start to worry. Andrea bravely intercepted Carlos Hank to ask for confirmation regarding the Tesa plane which was detained from flying until Ramond got on the plane. Andrea even dared to say that funds from the Tijuana cartel flowed into the casino owned by Hank's family which made this politician unable to answer. Breslin finally flew to Tijuana to meet General Riballo. This general was surprised by Breslin, who he said was very excited to be reassigned to Mexico. Didn't want to waste time. Breslin assigned to watch two members of the San Diego gang who made a suspect in Cardinal's murder. When Andrea back to her office, her boss got a threat from Hank's lawyer because his client accusing of doing money laundering belonging to the cartel. Andrea who smarts, she is only smiling, and she only mentions the flow of funds, while his lawyer says that this is money laundering practice. This is clear that they are messy and confess their crime. Benjamin refuses Inadina's idea to escape from Tijuana, because he felt he still had a great person behind him that could fix the problem, because of that he was going to meet Pastor Bays. When the army was preparing to arrest Benjamin, Breslin was surprised, he was instead assigned to wait for an empty truck. When he was about to turn on the radio, Breslin finally realized he had been tricked by the Mexican military who were going to carry out the arrest mission. Turns out that Pastor Bays is working with the authorities to arrest Benjamin. When Benjamin gets out of his car, he sees Pastor but feels something is wrong. And it is right, the authorities have set a trap for him. Luckily, with the help of Ramond who came to the location, first with the shootout, finally Benjamin was able to escape from this trap. Breslin who came to take a taxi there only saw the failure of the arrest planned by Riballo. After this incident, Benjamin finally followed Enadina's advice to abandon Tijuana. Breslin complained to the general because he was not involved in the arrest until it ended in a total failure. Riballo gave an overview of the situation that occurred in his country when the people themselves did not respond well to offers of millions of dollars to provide information about Capo. But there were no good results because the Mexican people did not trust the government. This is their biggest homework to change these thoughts. But he promised to hunt down all illegal drug smugglers in Mexico with the support of the people. Breslin, who was amazed by the determination of this general, 
declared himself to help anything Rebello needs. Breslin was surprised when this general told him that they managed to catch Capo in Guatemala because of his accomplice there selling Capo to him. It means that sometimes greed is also useful. Finally, Capo is shown already at a Mexican prison. Benjamin leaves his brothers in Tijuana for their safety from being arrested by the government and Mexican officials. In the prison, Capo again meets Don Nito. Meanwhile, Victor is trying to uncover the death of Juarez women, and he saw a bus carrying dozens of female workers. In this magnificent house, Amato is now the untouchable boss of Mexican illegal drugs. Manwire, Breslin is getting used to being in the Mexican Army Headquarters, which is a task force unit in illegal drug eradication operations. Mexico's problems expanded after the assassination of the Archbishop. Armed rebel groups emerged who controlled the cities. One of them is the Zapatistas who began to rebel on January 1, 1994, when NAFTA was enforced. NAFTA is a free trade agreement between America, Canada, and Mexico, which is considered detrimental to poor citizens and the natives. A conflict ensued between a PRI official. Luis became the PRI candidate for the next president, but halfway through, Colosio changed his mind. Besides that, Amato was getting more successful because of his business deal with Cali, who paid him for the product. The coffers of money he got because he immediately became a dealer in America. With his five tons of rations per month, Amato pocketed hundreds of millions of dollars every month because his collaboration with Hank went well. Not only become an illegal drug lord in Mexico, but he also become a great smuggler everywhere, until Pacho came and bring bad news for him. Cali Cartel agreed to the government to surrender to the police, and then he was imprisoned for some time, and will be released again. After that, they turned to legal business, which means the business deal with Amato will end. And if Amato loses his supply, it is the same as destroying his business, as well as the Arellano family who are both going bankrupt. When Ismael came to visit, Anidina immediately collected the shrimp fisherman's debt, even though Pacho did not agree because Ismael had been a friend of this family for a long time. Victor returned to the mortuary to see the next female victim, and it turned out that based on the necklace he was wearing it matched the photo he saw. It meant that the woman was Teresa who all this time he was looking for. Breslin came to San Diego when his friend Jack tell that he arrests the younger brother Ramon's confidant who turned out to be Alex who was arrested for carrying illegal weapons. This judge's son turned out to be smart. He didn't want to be interrogated before there was a warrant. He was sure this place was not the police office. Breslin then released him while giving him a business card. And Edina contacted Amato to work together to find new suppliers because at this time they needed each other's supply of goods again. When Alex came home by taxi, it turns out Breslin followed him. Mexico was shocked by the death of Luis, who became the candidate of the president when doing a campaign in Tijuana. Andrea got information from her political assistant of Luis named Karen that the culprit was the PRI party itself, because the Mexican presidential candidate wanted to make a change. Whether Hank was behind all of this? That Andrea had to prove. Breslin was shocked when he saw Alex come out of the house accompanied by Alfredo, which is Ramon's confidant. Victor finally brings Teresa's aunt to see her body. According to the forensic doctor, there was blood on her nails, and it was suspected that the victim clawed the perpetrator to put up a fight. If Victor wanted to investigate her DNA, he had to ask America for help. Amato met a cartel boss from the North Valley who said was ready to help to supply his illegal drug needs. Breslin and the task force watching that house again. At night, they see Ramond and Francesco were seen there. The team immediately moves to catch them. The team lost Ramond, who was able to escape. Breslin came into the house and succeed to catch Francesco. Victor then contacted the DEA office in El Paso and was accepted by Jane. He said that he has information about Amato's younger brother named Vicente, but Victor asks for compensation to do the DNA check. Jane then agrees to it. Amato finally now that his younger brother has been caught by police and that's why he is sure they followed him. Victor, accompanied by Rogelio, was determined to meet Vicente for the first time and pretended to ask for a job. A man was suddenly at Andrea's house to threaten her, because she would publish news about the crime of Hank and his colleagues at PRI. Alex suddenly contacted Breslin, because he was afraid of Ramond, who was considered to be the cause of Pacho's arrest. Breslin immediately tells General the location of Ramond, and Adina and Benjamin return to attack after North Valley refused a supply request because they preferred Amato. Ismail's ship is to be their target for messages to Amato. After that, Azul was killed. Even, Amato himself almost became the target.
the force tasked team planning to the location of Ramund was attacked by Ramund, who took advantage of Alex's innocence to trap Breslin. Luckily, this DEA agent survived the attack. And the scene shows the La Vaz newspaper published news with the title, Who Wants Him Dead? The results of the newspaper publication were then distributed to all corners of the city of Tijuana. The driver and his assistant delivered the newspapers to the retailer. But suddenly, because the attack was aimed at the La Vaz newspaper, which is famous for voicing the truth, Salgado plans to use security services at his office. The reporters who work at this media feels their phone were hacked. After hearing an odd click sound, Andrea realizes that in war, the first victim is the truth. The scene moves to the Mexican military task force team and Agent Breslin, who focuses on worsening the cartel gang in Tijuana, like Ramond, Alfredo, and Alex. In prison, Capo and Nito threw their days in joy. Ismael, who previously came under attack from the Arellano brothers, decided to join Capo. Even though Sinaloa was considered finished, Ismael had a plan to restore the glory of Sinaloa. A thug was shot dead by Rogelio after Vicente told them that there was a complainant. Rogelio didn't know if this his friend was working with DEA. For their safety, Salgado to hide the author's name in the articles published in his newspaper. As a fighter reporter who is not afraid of threats, Andrea didn't agree with her boss's decision. In contrast to Andrea's colleague named Marco, he chose to resign because he was worried about his family, which he had to provide for. Alex who is going somewhere, catch by the cartel hunter's team. But unlucky, Alfredo can escape. Secretly, Victor met Jane in El Paso. He was worried that someone would recognize him. Victor felt that he had told Vicente's accomplices, but when he asked for DNA results, it turned out that the DNA was invalid and difficult to match the identity. Victor, who gets disappointed, chose to leave. Amado came to meet Ismael, above the rest of his ship who burned. Ismael asks for Amado's help to supply funds because he has a plan to seize the Tijuana area from the Arellano brothers. With the troops owned by Sinaloa, Ismael wants to take revenge on the Arellano brothers and return to building his business. Amato agrees, moreover before, he has become their target. Arriving at the headquarters, Alex was immediately taken to building C. Breslin who didn't know about the building, immediately asked General Riballo. The building was a special place for the general to carry out unofficial interrogations before the media found out about this arrest. In this room, Alex's hands and feet were chained and there was a camera that continued to record it. With the help of Amato and Sinaloa, this cowboy fisherman started to launch attacks. Some of the Arellano accomplices who were afraid of death chose to switch direction to the Sinaloa side. Don Nato and Capo worked out this whole plan well from behind prison. In the end, Ismael needed a companion and it was no longer Palma, but El Capo. Anadina, who controlled Tijuana, began to feel uneasy because of the attacks the enemies had carried out. Hank went to Amato's very magnificent house. He warned that their business partnership could end if Amato continued to show the war between these cardinals to the surface. With his power, Hank could easily freeze his wealth if Amato doesn't obey his order. After getting into the car which brings dozens of female workers, Victor got information from one of the women that her friend was missing after getting a lift from an American luxury car. The interrogation was carried out on Alex, but he still kept his mouth shut not wanting to say the location of his brother's hiding place and also Ramond. Breslin was surprised when Alex said he was a dual citizen because he was born in America. Even though the general realized that this was an illegal action, their mission could not survive in the middle of the road. And then C. Namato recalled when his uncle which is Don Nito introduced him to Felix to get on his first plane. During a worsening economic situation, but for Amato, who became a drug lord in Mexico, his wealth is increasing. Hank reminded that what Amato needs to ensure that there are no problems is the supply of goods. Andrea got information from Karen who used to be active in the PRI party, that the funding party source was from the smuggling of illegal drugs that reached billions of dollars. And the person who manages it is Hank. To support her testimony, she gives thousands of documents as proof that Hank manages dirty money. Breslin gets information that Alex's mother makes a fuss at the consulate to get back her son who was detained by the Mexican military. Amado meets his supplier named Henao, who guarantees the goods will remain smooth, but he regrets Cali made a deal with the government. Amado must know that when Pacho comes to Mexico, he will be killed. That's because the principle of a cartel is that cannot get out of his world except death. Is Amado going to help Pacho, or is he going to give up on him like what happened to Felix? Riballo doesn't want to release Alex until he tells him the location of his brother's hiding place. 
Back to Victor, who didn't give up on uncovering the perpetrators of serial killings of young women in his city. He was willing to stay up all night to watch if the perpetrators returned to carrying out their actions. Arturo reported to Capo that Sinaloa had revived after their collaboration with Ismail. They only have two options to the gang of Arellano to cooperate or end up with a gun. What Capo regrets until now. Palma chooses to hide in the mountains. And Adina and Raymond are really on edge after their illegal drug warehouse was taken by Sinaloa and their people. Breslin convinces Alex to hand over his brother if he wants to meet again with his mother. After being given a cigarette, finally Alex opened his mouth. Rogelio told Victor that Vicente needed security to be placed in a nightclub near Toll Road. When he found his hiding place, it turned out that Alfredo and his girlfriend had already been killed by Baron. When he became security of Vicente, the Vurez police felt that his life had no meaning being a handyman hit the thug. Because Alex didn't know his brother was dead, Breslin wanted to use him to get Benjamin. Amato ordered his accountant to withdraw $15 million every week from his account without being noticed by Hank. That night, Victor was chasing a suspicious car. Meanwhile, the La Vaz reporter team found a transaction that reached the hundreds of millions of dollars that PRI did at El Paso's savings and loan bank every month, which they suspected came from the cartel. Victor's suspicions were proven because the car was carrying a female worker. When the chase was carried out, Victor's tires were flat. And then the money withdrawn by Amato turns out to give to a Cuban girl and his ex-wife, including a land and house certificate, so that this frisky girl would want to go with him because Amato intends to retire. After being caught, Palma is thrown into prison and reunited with his best friend, Capo. Secretly, Victor takes the SIM card on Vicente's phone stored in his car. Breslin gives Alex the task of deducing the location of Raymond and his family's hiding from the recordings of the results of wiretapping by the authorities. When Andrea pretends to enter the bank, she sees a woman named Sofia, who is allegedly in charge of managing Dora's cartel and Hank. Amato is shocked when Hank finds out about suspicious spending from his account. Even, Hank also knows about a frisky woman from Cuba who is currently close to Amato. Dare to mess around, Hank will take action against Amato. Victor and Rogelio again kill a man by orders of Vicente. When he returns to listening to the recording of Benjamin, Breslin began to find the clue from Benjamin's child, who suffers from a serious illness in the lung and brain. Only four clinics can be healed those diseases. From one of the clinics, Breslin got information about the arrival of Benjamin's child, therefore, he asked Ribablo to prepare his team. Don Nato influences Capo in prison because according to him, Capo should be in control of Sinaloa, not Palma. Victor asks Jane for the result of the investigation of the Plat number police from the culprit car. In return, Jane got Vicente's SIM card. Victor is again annoyed because the police number is fake, and Jane suspects it is a stolen car. Breslin and his team begin to prepare for Benjamin's arrest. Aimed with information from their team, they are following their child and wife. This girl starts to prepare for escape after Amato tells her that she is watching by the enemy. From the top of the hill, the team could not confirm Benjamin's whereabouts at his hiding location. Although this was a gamble, Breslin decided to raid the location in the dark. Two of Hank's accountants were sent to check Amato's finances, but there they sent immediately finished them off as well as this girl who managed to escape because she was protected by Amato. Amato decided to disappear after Callie's funds were successfully withdrawn. At night, Breslin and his team began to raid the location. Andrea's partner found a fact about the flow of funds to a dead soldier. It was revealed here that the boss was General Riballo. In that house, Breslin failed to find Benjamin's whereabouts. Is this due to Riballo's actions causing the operation to fail? Andrea finally concluded that the funds from the Gores cartel were sent to Riballo, who became the head of the anti-drug task force. Salgado decided to write about it in the newspaper and ask for an explanation from General Pinnell in Mexico City. Breslin was shocked when Jane told him that General Riballo would be arrested. When he came to the headquarters, dozens of soldiers and federal officials were busy destroying documents that could embarrass Riballo. Breslin at that time feels cheated by General who was bribed by Amato. At that time, he took Alex to be taken into San Diego. And then what about Amato's fate? Riballo was finally arrested with the threat of 40 years in prison, as well as with Vicente. The next wanted target is Amato. But until now, Hank be able to erase his bad track record. Capo and his accomplices who were in prison also got into trouble because they had difficulty getting supplies of goods, while Ismail chose to return to being a fisherman. Palma proposed to Capo to take back his people from Tijuana, 
When the prison officials informed him that there was a transfer, Capo gave it to Palma. Benjamin returned to lead the Tijuana cartel after Amado and his accomplices were getting destroyed. When Amado was about to head for his plane, suddenly an attack appeared from the Mexican soldiers who were chasing him. The shootout was back again. Amado is almost taken off the plane, but the machine is broken due to the shot. For Sedley, he escapes by riding a car. Meanwhile, Breslin watches Alex, who will be the witness to Arellano's crimes, including when he was at a military base under the leadership of Ruballo. Andrea was praised by her superiors, and because of her news, finally, Ruballo was arrested. But they were not satisfied because Hank's crime had not been revealed yet. After all this time conducting an investigation, Victor finally found a psychopath who raped and killed a young woman in Duarez. After seeing the scratch marks on his chest, Victor immediately finished him. Back at the lodge, Breslin didn't find Alex whereabout, who he suspected back in Tijuana. Capo succeeds to get rid of Palma to another prison, including Don Nato which could affect his leadership. Victor was surprised when the police found seven bodies at once and one of them was killed this morning without being buried. It turned out that hundreds of Duarez women who became victims were people who voiced justice. Breslin was shocked when he got information that Alex found hanging at the bridge. Finally, Breslin met Andrea to give his confession about the death of Alex, who was a dual citizen, and all forms of torture he experienced while at the military base. It was for the sake of information carried out by Riballo. When the owner of the La Vaz Daily magazine was on his way, home suddenly the Baron and dozens of his men launched an attack. Besides Salgado who died there, it turned out that the Baron was hit by a shot by his men that missed hitting his left eye. Bad luck befell Victor, because Rogelio already knew his partner was working with DEA. As a result, Victor was immediately shot dead. Amado, who was nicknamed the ruler of the sky, finally died due to his heart stopping while doing facial plastic surgery. While Carlos Hank died in 2001, Ramond was shot dead by the police while stopping his journey to hunt down Ismael. Come on. And Adina and Benjamin could not hold their sadness when they heard that bad news. The police are Ismael's men. He invites Capo to build his business again in Duarez, after being abandoned by Amato. He never tired of his duties, Breslin returned to continue his job as a DEA agent. And after that, the film ends.